The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Tuesday, April 20th, 2021 years after the year zero. This show will begin immediately following this beat drop. There was from Twine, and here we go. Happy 420 to all of you, wherever the hell you may be, whether it's on SiriusXM or watching along on YouTube. Now, 420 is obviously a celebration of, you know, an herbal remedy that makes a lot of people feel a lot better about themselves, both uh, physically and emotionally. And the range of humans that celebrate 420 can go from, uh, you know, some bum that's sleeping on a couch. I mean, that's going to happen every once in a while, but it also goes all the way up to the most successful people on earth. And I think for far too long, a certain plant has been labeled a, uh, maybe a bum producer, a laziness creator, a inactivity starter. I mean, it feels like the way marijuana was viewed by some people for a long time is as if it was the worst thing on earth. Now, I happen to believe that's because a lot of people who are currently in power now and have a big say in the way things are run were first introduced to marijuana via the hippies after a war. And the hippies basically stood for everything that the people now and potentially in power that hate, um, you know, marijuana, they hate hated everything that the hippies were for. So I think the the first impression of it wasn't fantastic. And then the nope to dope and then saying it was a gateway drug, which is an absolute bullshit statement. Okay, that is an absolute. I would assume, by the way, uh, that anybody that has gone on to smoke uh, meth, which, by the way, don't want you to do that, no. or do any other drugs, don't want you to do that. Those people, which is a very small percentage of people that smoke marijuana, guess what else? They, I'm assuming that they've smoked cigarettes before uh, i'm assuming that they have uh drank alcohol before so if you want to label them all potential gateway drugs to the people in our society that is very unfortunate who don't know how to control or maybe keep things you know in proper perspective and go on to do something terrible you can't label one thing as the reason for that entire thing and this is not a hey it's better than alcohol or tobacco for you because it certainly is but that's never been a good sell what i would like you to know is that marijuana is at this point of time that it's almost going to be legalized. I think it's only a matter of time. Maybe 2022, 420, we're all smoking together. Maybe 2023, we're all smoking together because those people that have hated marijuana for a very long time have been kind of forced into trying it now at this point. And turns out, they all fucking love it. <laughs> There's a reason it's been around for so long. There's a reason that people have tried and smoked it in different fashions, whether, you know, you're doing the peace pipe way back in the day, which is kind of evolutionized into, uh, you know, you can hit a bong if you need to. The, the bowl will always be there, which is what I was referring to for the peace pipe there. You can use a gas mask where you actually strap yourself into a fighter pilot's thing and have a, uh, a steamroller out of the front of that and inhale it and then you're just engulfed in it for a good 10 to 15 seconds where every breath and you might as well say goodbye to yourself there there's blunts there's cones uh there's plenty of there's water bombs i, I mean there's water uh, uh you can take a gatorade bottle cut out a little piece of your screen go ahead and put that in there make a bong out of it you can smoke out of an apple there is reasons why the multiple thing the multitude of things you smoke out of is the way it is because people have been trying to smoke this shit for so long because it is fantastic for you <laughs> it is great it is awesome and science proves it people's happiness prove it and i think the success of people that potentially use it also prove it so if you're somebody out there that hates marijuana i understand i appreciate you but you're fucking wrong happy 420 to you as well <laughs> hope you guys have an incredible day we have a show the toxic table is back uh boston connor ty schmidt how you doing boys great to see you great to be here pat happy 420 happy 420 happy you guys don't have covid that's yes. good news very yeah. happy about that zito how you doing pal happy you don't have covid either thank you yeah i feel good you had it one time i had it one time and i have a shot now and you Ooh, beat it by yeah. the way you, you, i did beat it you, oh actually i can't smell still oh, i still geez. can't smell no 
Really? Nice. It's very weird, yeah. So I, my brain is so powerful that I could guess what food tastes like. Oh, uh, okay. you know, smells uh, like. So right now you could potentially just be eating like um, incredibly healthy things. I could, but yeah, I like pizza. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what, the, what no, it smells but like. The smell though is a big part of the taste, right? <sighs> yeah. Oh yeah. And you could just kind of slip some. Like, I, I think that is a part of the whole process of why people don't do it. I, I'm sorry you can't smell anymore. I thought yeah. you were an immunicorn. I thought you were past it. Hopefully that'll come back at some point. Yeah, it said like six months could come back. She, yeah, Jeez. but they don't know. They don't know. Don't know. Yeah, but they don't know. They don't know. When they tell you that, <laughs> did, did they even have a chance to have a six-month study yet? It's very true. They don't that. know. <laughs> they, they have no idea, but happy you're back in Thank here. Uh, there is some um, news that's involving the toxic table directly, and it's happening in the football world. There was allegedly some photos leaked of a possible trade for the New England Patriots to trade with the Green Bay Packers, and in that trade would be Jordan Love. Toxic table representing both sides of this thing. Who would be more happy in that particular situation Ty? yeah me a yeah, thousand percent a thousand percent if you get rid of jordan love guess what Raj is, is in green bay for the rest of his career he's retiring a packer but I, I mean do you think this is legitimate or do you think this is just trolling everyone that is kind of like you know in the middle of this aaron Rodgers drama not knowing if he's gonna be the quarterback i have year. no idea do we have the photos We're of this thing it up. yeah because if we have the photos of this thing I, I have some questions here now if we're going to move on from jordan love and say hey let's give aaron Rodgers 10 years this is your team pal let's go ahead and buy in here sorry about the first round draft pick we did just make a move though now with the patriots we're going to try to get something else but if you're a patriot are you happy about this absolutely not are okay. you kidding All me right, good. i'm no just happy way. here nobody's happy about this <laughs> do we have the uh because i didn't really know where the photo had come from because it <laughs> makes really no sense this is from gillette nation i guess uh, i don't know the the twitter account i don't know it's from a packer's desk is this where it's from it's from how did this get out is this a snapchat for those that are listening there was a photo released of somebody's desk and on the desk it has a a um like a binder with some photos hang or some paper hanging out of the bottom of it and the top of it so perfectly hanging out of the bottom of it <laughs> and perfectly hanging out of the top of it and it says potential trade qb uh love and then round one pick 29 and then round uh i think two or something else and some other thing and then they would obviously be trading with the new england patriots for this so Whose desk is this? Why do we care? And how did this become something on the internet yesterday? I have no idea. And why would the Patriots be sold enough when all we've heard is that they're trying to potentially move up to get their quarterback? Why would they yeah. give their 15th pick for Jordan Love and then the 29th? Well, because they're getting their guy. Jordan Love. <laughs> That's right. We were high on him in 2020, apparently. And hey, this is a quarterback who's been learning for Aaron, from Aaron Rodgers for a year. Are you I don't kidding know me? He Bring him been. in. Him, he, they have not put on a uniform at the same time. Together. They True. I don't think he dressed the entire season. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I don't he didn't. think he did. He's been watching a lot of tape. But they were in film. Mm -hmm. Yep. And by the way, you go up to the Patriots, you get a chance to learn from Cam Newton. Exactly. You know what I mean? Maybe start hitting some nets in there. Maybe Jordan Love's future would be a very bright one if it was around Bill Belichick. And I can't, I can't hammer this home enough. This is not Jordan Love's fault. No, no it is not. Never has been. Jordan Love got drafted to a position that immediately made him instantaneously hateable oh yeah <laughs> yeah instantaneous by an entire fan base that just saw their team get to the nfc championship just saw the san francisco 49ers gouge them for i forget the exact 186 total. yeah yards before <laughs> contact on the ground to just run the packers out of the building over there in santa clara california to go to the super bowl so everybody thought this draft alongside aaron i think aaron even thought this as well hey we uh you know we make this team a little bit better here we can go on a real run mm -hmm. then they use their first round draft i'm sorry they trade into the first round to draft for the obvious future in that particular person that had no idea his dream just came true to be drafted to the nfl let alone to the packers a storied franchise he has no idea that he he just got dropped into an absolute buzzsaw of what the fuck yep, okay yeah. why are we doing this that's how every Packers fan had to feel you actually gave uh, one of the loudest goddammits and most tense goddammits of all time immediately following his draft pick there's no reason he deserved to have that but maybe you move him on Ooh. you know maybe he gets a chance to kind of see better places maybe he gets the experience and kind of spread his wings like jimmy g behind tom brady yeah. you know maybe jordan love goes on to have a great career and this is all just an unfortunate situation for him i think it would make sense i mean he could use probably a fresh start i mean I i'm sure a lot of people this is sam darnold yeah exactly <laughs> exactly like it if he stays right now 
let's say Rodgers doesn't win MVP next year, but still has a great year. Packers make the playoffs, and then he leaves, and then Love comes right in. Like, he, he's still going to, you know, people are still going to, they're going to hate it. So why not just kind of, hey, listen, it didn't work out. We made a mistake. Rodgers still got a lot left in the tank. Let's get you somewhere else and and give you a new beginning because he can he could use it. I I think he could use a very fresh start. I honestly believe that he could, uh, you know, because if you go somewhere new, you got to prove yourself. Yeah. And, and I assume Aaron Aaron said he he'll answer any question. I assume him oh, yeah. and Aaron's relationship is okay. Mm-hmm. Imagine having Aaron as a guy you could text and ask questions to. Yeah. And I think Aaron wants to do this right, but also understands like, yo, this is not my it's not my job to coach you either. No. Pal. Like I I don't know what you want me to do here. You know. And how pumped is Aaron? You know, when he finds out that if they do trade up to fifteen, get like Devonte Smith. And then you partner him with Adams, and all of a sudden, their offense is going. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's potentially going to move. There's a lot of other things going on in the NFL as well. Mike Tomlin just got a three-year extension. Congrats to Mike Tomlin. This is unbelievable. I guess if he stays through this entire contract, which is likely the Steelers, I don't think, are going to fire Mike Tomlin at this point, short of his contract coming to an end. Or maybe, I don't know. I have no I would assume not. But it just this would be 55 straight years that the uh, Steelers have had with like three coaches or something like that. Unbelievable. <laughs> Teams are dying <laughs> to yeah. find head coaches. There is a turnstile at the head coaching. I need a job market. I mean, it is all the time. And the Steelers just go from one to another. And now they find Tomlin, who was a defensive coach for the Vikings whenever he came over, was very young. Nobody had a clue what the hell a Mike Tomlin was, I think, outside of Minnesota. He comes in, leads him to a Super Bowl, absolutely beloved by his players. And now he's going to keep this thing rolling. I know there is uh, Pittsburgh Steelers fans, and I think it's because of the amount of consistency the Steelers have shown for so long it's kind of a gift and a curse for the fans because the expectations get to a completely different level but Mike Tomlin is beloved by a lot of people in Pittsburgh yep Mm -hmm. there is a a group of yinzers though (laughs) that are about done with Mike Tomlin okay they they say hey listen team's been good for a long time we want to win a Super Bowl it's not easy to be good for a long time in those teams that are good potential injury or two away if you look back on a couple seasons of the Pittsburgh Steelers of them winning a Super Bowl I mean the 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 crowning accomplishment of how good Tomlin was with one tweet was in 2019 with uh, Duck Hodges Mm -hmm. and Mason Rudolph playing quarterback. (laughs) And they would complete less passes than than I potentially have in a game. (laughs) (laughs) Okay? And that's not their fault. That's not their fault. Just the way things were going. We love Duck. Oh, yeah. Duck Duck, Duck is a player. uh, Duck is a player, okay? Mason Rudolph, we don't know him, but... We understand that he plays football as well. Right. You know, <laughs> and it's one of those things, and not that he's not. It's They almost made it. We were there for the night against the Buffalo Bills yeah. who were turning things around. And by the way, Bills Mafia was heavy in there. They win that game somehow. They're in the playoffs, and that team should not have made the playoffs no. at <laughs> all. Somehow Tomlin had them believing that they were supposed to win those games. They were not. Now there's a lot of people that say they almost made a playoff. Mark Madden actually this morning. Yeah. Almost made the playoffs is a crowning achievement. It's like <laughs> winning with a bad team is like almost the best thing a coach can do. Like, that's the purpose of a coach. Now, can he go win another Super Bowl for the Pittsburgh Steelers? I think that is what all eyes are going to be on. And, uh, you know, I think if you're – I'm pumped at Tom. Tomlin's one of the reasons why I'm in the NFL. I like Tomlin a lot. But could you imagine the, the Patriots, I guess? Yep. Bill Belichick. Long time. Long time. Sean Payton. Sean Payton's been around a long time down yeah. there in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Packers. Yeah, McCarthy was there for a long time. But then LaFleur comes in, mm-hmm. new coach. Have had success, though. Yeah. So there's three franchises, basically, that have been very, you know, content with new coaches. you got to go uh, Tony Dungy, Jim Caldwell, Chuck Pagano, Frank Reich. Spurts of success through all of those yeah. things there. Mm-hmm. And Jim Caldwell, he got fucked. Yeah, for, <laughs> uh, twice. He, I mean, in Detroit, he yeah. got screwed yeah. as well. Yeah. But in Indy, he got absolutely. I mean, we lose our quarterback, then – allegedly there was people maybe higher up than the coach that were potentially planning for the future with Andrew Luck sitting there. Players did not know that. I don't think coaches knew that. But now that there's potentially stories coming out that said, you know, some decisions were being made at the high end to whatever potentially put us in the best position uh, position for success, which they did. But Jim Caldwell has to just sit there, stare down the pipe of a almost completely defeated season. Two years before that, we were undefeated until we chose to lose. Yeah. And that was his first year head coaching, I think. Yeah, and that's what so- 
<laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. I mean, granted, he had Peyton Manning. Now that's oh, what everybody would say. He had Peyton Manning. He had Peyton Manning. But then he goes up to Detroit. Yeah. He wins in Detroit. And yeah. they're like, not good enough. Get him out. <laughs> Get him out. It's like, come on, come on. But circumstance, new regime in Indy. Detroit had no excuse. No, no chance. Excuse. And that's why Tomlin is so impressive because, like, Big Ben goes down and they could easily turn and be like, all right, hey, let's go 2-14 and 14 and get the best possible player. And he's like, no, fuck that. We're, we're going full Trade speed Trading for Minka. Yeah, yeah. Right, bring him in. All right, we, we, we've, seen these, we've seen these boys in practice, right? We're not going to be able to move the ball much. No, no what way. Do we, need to, we, need to, uh, we need to toughen up the defense. Okay, let's go trade for Minka Fitzpatrick, who's going to almost become defensive MVP, by the way, <laughs> yeah. immediately upon arriving in Pittsburgh. Not that he wasn't great in Miami, but it was like, that is what Tomlin does. And him and Colbert there have been together for a long time. Congrats to Tomlin getting a new deal. The Broncos, allegedly, via Woody Page, who's OG mm -hmm. icon in the sports media world, the Broncos allegedly made the first call to the Atlanta Falcons for that fourth overall pick. So the, the interesting thing here is, and we had an entire great graphic for this because the Falcons you know there wasn't a lot of talk about them potentially moving out of there now draft night might be completely different but allegedly the Falcons were sticking around now Woody Page is alleging that the Broncos have already reached out and the Falcons are still there so everybody's like are they going to take quarterback or what are they going to do then I thought maybe Kyle Pitts gets drafted top five yeah. so that conversation led us to how many tight ends have been drafted top five in the NFL we did a little research we did some math since 1950 something only two tight ends have been drafted top five Jeez. so if Kyle Pitts goes at four to Atlanta or if Atlanta moves and another quarterback gets drafted there or if he goes the five and he gets drafted number five overall or whatever Mike Ditka <laughs> in 1961 was drafted top five as a tight end and Riley Odoms was pick number five in 1972 since then Zero tight ends have gone in the top five. Now, there have been some that have gone in the top ten, but the way people are talking about Kyle Pitts, he might go in the top five for the Falcons. Is Since you're sticking with Matt Ryan, out of necessity, basically. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure they love Matt Ryan down there. Listen, I understand he's a good player. Arthur Smith will be a great coach. He's a good offensive mind with uh, great offensive mind with Matt Ryan. But they also owe him a hundred million dollars. I'd, I'd assume that was a little bit of a difficult trade. But Jared Goff got traded, so I, I guess anything could have happened. But if the Falcons stay there, you got to assume they're going to go best player on the board. Everybody says best player on the board is Kyle Pitts. If he goes top five, that's legendary status down there. Ditka in sixty, Riley in seventy, and then nobody ever since. That's insane to think. Think about in that Falcons offense, you yeah. know, Ridley, Jones, Pitts, they got Hayden Hurst, who's a pretty good tight end. Like, Ryan, I mean, yeah. that, they might throw for 500 yards a goddamn game. Now, Todd Gurley is no longer um, a Falcon, right? He's, no, a free agent. he's a free agent, he's a free agent, I believe. Mm -hmm. But the Falcons got a lot of leverage in there. Oh, yeah. A lot of leverage. Uh, there's some other shit going on. Fitz Magic said uh, on the Chris Long Greenlight Green, yeah. podcast. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well done. Good pull. Well, the issue is his, his Instagram is like Joel91 or something. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so every time I see it pop up, there's like four names here, okay? So it's who it is, mm -hmm. okay? Long, Chris Long. Then it is Joel91. <laughs> then it is Greenlight Pod. And I'm like, God damn, I want to get it right because he does great work and I appreciate the hell out of him. But there's a lot going on there. On the Greenlight Pod, Ryan Fitzmagic, absolute legendary human, talked about him texting Alex Smith after his injury. I think we have the clip here regrets to date uh when alex broke his leg in that game a few years ago i had a what i thought was similar injury i fractured my tibia in 2014 with the houston texans and so the single worst tweet or t not tweet i've never tweeted the single worst text <laughs> i've ever sent out i sent it to alex and i said hey alex just want to let you know they'll fix you right up you'll be good as new you know i'm out here and i don't feel any pain from you know my injury you know three years later or whatever and i sent it and felt good about it and he said well mine might be a little more complicated you know, 17 surgeries later and the story of what he had to overcome i mean i felt like the biggest i'm so glad he's ever. okay and we can laugh no. about that now <laughs> me too what a moment there for fitz ah hey man quarterback to quarterback i appreciate what you've done uh been there, done that with that thing. And Alex is just like throbbing in pain. He's like, Ryan, dude, mine's a little bit more complicated. <laughs> They're actually talking about maybe having to amputate my legs. So. Yeah, that legit was a yeah, worry. Yeah. Staph infection, Near right? death, too. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. I think there was a couple of those. How many? 17 surgeries? 18 yep. surgeries? That's wild. What a comeback. Um, and then what a retirement. Congrats to him on a hell of a run, Alex Smith. Yeah. That's Ryan Fitzmagic, though. 
like such a good guy. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh man, I hate that for Alex. Yeah. He's probably feeling so bad about himself right now. I'm going to let him know it's going to be okay. <laughs> Feels you know, good about the text. Hey, hey man. <laughs> just want to, you know, probably, probably edited it a couple of times yeah. if I had to guess. Sends it out there. Hope you're feeling better, sport. You know, at the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alex is just like, I've already had four surgeries in less than 12 hours. Yeah. Things are not going good over here, right? Oh, my God. Pitts had to feel so absolutely terrible. one 888 mad dog 6 Hey, it's nice to have the bark back. Yesterday, it was back. a little quiet. It was a little quiet. It was a little quiet. Happy birthday, Connor, by the way. Didn't Thank get you. a chance to say it. I mean, kind of fucked up still, but, you know, good dudes. Entertaining dudes. Hardworking dudes. Good dudes. Happy birthday, Connor. Happy birthday, Connor. Appreciate it. Ty, you got to say that to him on Saturday, you see? So you don't I, have to reiterate it now. I, you know what I mean? I didn't. He actually didn't. Yeah, I, I didn't mention that. <laughs> you didn't? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. No. <laughs> and then showed up late, you know, had the first vax and then kind of just. Yeah. How about the vax, by the way, though? We need that for real. I'll be honest, the, the process where I went, like, literally got in got out i was expecting to be there all day it takes uh, two seconds i was in a ghetto cvs and a guy was reaching for cookies when i was getting my shot yeah see i went to an actual hospital hold on hold on <laughs> so was there like a all right let's <laughs> oh, <laughs> this. that's where you got your vaccine from? yeah it was a ghetto cvs i was actually on pelton pike Okay, so <laughs> I don't know if it was the vaccine. To be honest, you, you might got... have squirted vitamin water in your shit. You, so, know. you know, you know, and maybe let's hope it was vitamin water. Try it, uh, fifty cent back in the day. So you know, like how when you have to pump up a ball, yeah, you know, how you have to like, um, you know, like maybe uh, moisten Lick the, it up a little bit. Needle? Yeah. Did they do any like sanitizing of the needles before you got shot? Was it? Did to you be s- honest, I didn't look at the workstation. Uh, it was in an aisle, in the cookie aisle. That can't yeah, happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just used this needle actually, so I'll just run it back yeah, again. Well, they, yeah. After you take the shot, though, they, they give you a little like uh, paper. And it says like uh, it's like eight minutes, and it's like you can't 15. leave until this hour fifteen. Yeah, just in case you like die or get allergic reaction. Well, okay. just stay in the cookie aisle. Seen some allergic reactions. <laughs> the, the internet has showcased the. <laughs> The bad reactions. Yeah, Shadow this guy Pfeiffer. had herpes on his entire back and chest. It was insane. Excuse me? Yeah. I did not see that. Oh, right yeah. I, I, I'll pull it up right now. Send it to Fox. The guy had herpes, herpes on his whole back. Oh, man. It was absurd. Was the One shot. of the grossest photos I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. We, do we know anything else about that guy? Maybe he did get the... I understand yeah. he might have got the vaccination, what but has he, he done anything else? Yeah, he probably did <laughs> get the vaccine and head straight to, you know, the Lucky Feather or whatever the hell is the local establishment over there. Oh, the cat uh, Oh, you're talking about a. Uh, uh-huh. You're talking about an adult ballet. Uh, yeah, that's right. So you think the adult ballet is just slinging herpes to people's backs? I mean, what? I mean, How? hey, I don't know what this guy's asking for when he goes in there. I'm just saying, I saw the photo with the with the explanation of how this guy got it. Yeah, but was it real? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, what is real these days? I saw somebody tweet out an Instagram caption from Joe Burrow that was maybe the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life, and then I went over to his Instagram and it wasn't on there. So I was like. <laughs> Oh, okay. Is that fake? I mean, the Patriots trade him with Green Bay. That seems fake. Yeah. That seems fake. <laughs> what about Jimmy from the Colts? That happened for a little bit. Oh, True. yeah. yeah. And I bought in on that. Yeah. We did not. No. Nope. I would like to let it be known that we never bought in. We did have to address it because the internet had it, but we never bought it. If you are going to get vaxxed, I would recommend going to a hospital and not to a CVS where some guy who's making seven twenty-five an hour is administering it to you. Potentially less. Potentially less. Chew on oh, chips. Oh, Martha yeah. knew what she was doing. Can I we think. get Martha? Oh, yeah. She was the best. Martha. I was wearing a long sleeve, so I had to take my whole shirt off. So. <laughs> is her name really Martha? <laughs> I think so. You know who Martha is down in Tampa? Who's that? Oh. That, that's the landlord down in Tampa. Are you <laughs> yeah, sure that you're same not? Lady. Yeah, I don't know if that's <laughs> two Marthas. <laughs> I feel like that's potentially. I, yeah. Different uh, name. <laughs> different name. March? Cookie Isle, though, is not where you should be getting vaccinated. No, no definitely not. But if you can, I mean, you got to do what you got to do, I guess. All power to you. What are the long-term effects of these things? Uh, we can, we uh. cannot get into Gisline and, and yeah. what that guy is spewing, you know, I'll, on the internet. I'll okay. be honest. That's all I was thinking. I saw the video of him saying, if you get the vaccine, you're going to be dead within 15 years. And I was just like, all right, well. Her name's Gisline. got studies right here. Her dad, her dad read a newspaper over there. Like, 
Get the vax gun guy. <laughs> yep. 15 years, I say. Johns Hopkins is telling you, not hey, me. I'm, I'm not saying it. I'm reading what doctors are telling you. It's right there. <laughs> All right. Happy 420. <laughs> Let's get to a break. We'll be back on the other side. one 888 mad dog We'll answer some phone calls. Anthony Gonzalez joins us in the third hour. Here we go. That should be a very good conversation. He just reintroduced the bill for the name image likeness thing for the NCAA players. This is a massive ordeal. I believe he's spearheading this thing in the um, the real government world over there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's a senator or congress congressman. There he is. He's a congressman, which I'm not sure what the difference is at this point. No idea. More congressmen. Fewer senators. Is that the House of Representatives? Is that the judiciary branch? Hmm. <laughs> or the executive? It might be. I, okay. the, the executive is the president. You I don't think it's the executive. I was just thinking the branches. Yeah. I, I was trying to get the other one. It's the judiciary branch? I think branch? it's on the judiciary side, yeah. And people are saying, no, it's not on the judiciary branch. <laughs> Legislative branch. It's a legislative uh, branch. I was the one. Close. I thought, Damn. the Supreme Court's on judiciary. Yeah, yeah that's right. Because they are judiciary of the judiciary. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Heard there's some shit going on up there, too. Man, I heard the judiciary branch is potentially getting a little bit bigger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People are not happy about it on one side. Boy, people are pumped on the other. Yeah. They have more games than we do, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, my God. In the sports world, we only have a certain amount of games mm-hmm. that really, you know, they seem to have in their world over there. Every day, somebody's battling somebody, and it's a rivalry that seems to be a never-ending one. Yeah. Yeah. Passing yeah. bills every day. I mean, they're trying to do stuff. They got 15 games a day. Bro, people get pissed, too. <laughs> oh, I yeah. Mean, people get pissed. It'll make its way into my timeline. In the reaction of their fans. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> it's not. It's very passionate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they will do it. Oh, yeah. Those the fans of the politics, they will get they mock us because, you know, we got Bill's Mafia, mm-hmm. of course, that shows incredible passion. Mm-hmm. We got fan bases that are willing to do it. It's four degrees. We're going shirtless because our team needs us. That's what sports yeah. fans have. Oh, yeah. Those politicians fans, hey, they will fucking... They play no games. <laughs> you see politics trending, click on it, because there's some but electric they're, shit in there. Their fans are going crazy yeah. over there. <laughs> Listen, the Bills the Bills Mafia will throw a dildo on the field. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, the politic fans will do a lot. Oh, man. Yeah, a lot more than well, that. Only two teams in that, in that game. How come yeah. we're always the dumb ones over here, the sports stooges, you know what I mean? Have we seen their fans do more dumb things than our fans? I think <laughs> I so. Would, yeah. <laughs> I think I mean I haven't studied it enough, but I feel like it makes its way into my world. And if it's making my its way into my world, it's been pretty big in their world. Yeah. So I feel like I've seen all their top hits that have made their way in there. They are passionate over oh, there. Very passionate. Yeah. They get angry. <sighs> like that. <laughs> yeah. And then there'll be somebody on the other side equally as pissed. Polar opposite view. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy. It's like, oh, you guys are never ever gonna. No. Oh, this will. This is gonna be a tie forever. Eternal stalemate. You guys need a sudden <laughs> death of some sort, like a shootout, maybe Ooh. like a, uh, a. Now, not. Now, I'm not talking about Alexander Hamilton. No, 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 not a duel. Not, I'm not talking okay. about a, not duel. a duel. No, okay. no, no. I'm talking about some sort of thing that they can figure it out whenever it's tied and there's a a, a lock going on. It's like, what do we need to get to? Maybe it's a basketball show. Or maybe Ooh. they like wrestle and like first take down. Oh, you know? there it is. Awesome. There it is. <laughs> First takedown wins. First, and then you got to get a ref in there, obviously. Yep. Mm-hmm. In the blue corner Two. over here. Hey, hey, Two. hey. A lot of hey. people have been uh, pushing fencing as the perfect uh, oh, future sport. No. For yeah, they get a choice. Right. Maybe it's a choice. Yeah. Okay, Yins can wrestle. <laughs> all right. Yins can fence. Yins can row. And they, they all like to uh, row. Oh, yeah. They, they love, love doing love the rowing. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, you each get your own little pontoon thing and just row the shit out of it. Whoever finishes first, guess what? You win. You're right. They need that, I think. They're good gonna, they yell at people. They yell at each other 24-7 over there. All yeah. day. And we'll talk to somebody that does that for a living. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Is that what he does? I'm going to ask him. Do you just yell all day at other people? Or like, gets yelled at by oh, yeah. other people. Oh, yeah. And then he has to be like, I categorically disagree with everything you just said. Yeah. I mean, at least he can be like, hey, line up at DB. I'm going to just... Oh yeah, shake oh, you real quick. Hey, which one? You want to wrestle? Yeah. <laughs> you want to wrestle? You want to fence? Or you want to whatever you want to do? Yeah. This all roads lead to me beating him. Yep. <laughs> Anthony Gonzalez got to feel pretty good over there if we were to make the rules. Yeah. Gonzo's former teammate of mine. He now just so happens to be a congressman who's about to make massive changes in the NCAA. Hopefully, might keep the NCAA afloat. By the way. Yeah. Nobody's talking about that. Everybody thinks this is kind of like a, a revolution against the NCAA. 
To be honest, long term, this might keep the NCAA afloat. It may, a legislation might get passed with Anthony Gonzalez kind of spearheading this that keeps the NCAA alive as opposed to the other alternative options that are definitely going to appear in the next couple years. Definitely. Not even a question. Wait till the NFT thing continues to grow and these high school kids can potentially get into the NFT game. I mean, it is. The NCAA is going to have to keep up somehow with paying uh, their athletes. It's just going to, it's just how it's going to be. There's, and by the way, here's another thing. People are going to hate everything <laughs> yeah. about it. I'm just telling you what's going to happen. We'll talk to Anthony Gonzalez about that in the third hour. AJ Hawk will join us in the next hour and your phone calls on the other side of the break. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Happy 420. Well, hello, sensual piano keys. You sound incredibly inspirational and motivational. Big announcement coming from our company. You know, throughout my entire life, I've made decisions that people have said, ooh, that is stupid. You've read about them, you heard about them. When I was in high school, I went to an underground poker game, won 1400 bucks, flew myself down to Miami, won a kicking contest, and got a scholarship to West Virginia the next day. I turned my back on soccer that day. Everybody said, you're an idiot. Why are you doing that? You have more schools looking at you for soccer than you do for football. What are you thinking? Fast forward eight years with the Indianapolis Colts, and I was on top of the world, top of the mountain. How's the view? Not too shabby. And when I was at the top of my game, I decided, you know what? I'm going to pursue some other stuff. My friends and I are going to go to work on the internet. We're going to try to chase fulfillment as opposed to just a paycheck. And there were some interesting responses from people of power in the sporting world. Make them the tear the uniform Absolutely. off of yes, you. Sure. Look, somebody needs to stage an intervention. People who know this guy, get to him now. Make him put his helmet back on and get to camp. Oh no, there's no intervention, Wilbon. No, no, no. Here we are three years after that date, and it's a celebration, bitches! Cut the music! Let's hand out some bags to the boys. For the boys. For the boys. Oh, by the way, that's you, brother. Oh my god. Are you home? Alright, come out the front door. What's up, dude? <laughs> What's this? Oh, you son of a bitch. What the fuck? Fuck you. Oh, my oh God. yeah, it is. The bag of money. Oh, the fan deal went through. There's $50,000 in there for you. Here's a backpack with uh, $50,000 in it. Oh, $50,000 in there. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah, so there's $50,000 in there. Yes, yeah, so there's $50,000 in there. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Let's go. Did you brought it back? <laughs> Oh man, let's go, dude. Let's go. I appreciate you, buddy. Yo, this is. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, dude. We did it. Couldn't have done it without you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> dude, it's a fuck ton of money. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> <laughs> When I asked Dan Patrick for some advice, he told me always take care of the boys. But, and you should know those people that are there with you, that their value cannot be overstated and should not be overstated. So Mike Wilbon, they didn't hold my jersey on me. They didn't hold my helmet on me. We didn't have an intervention. What we have is a celebration because when you bet on yourself, sometimes you hit for big. And for us, the only place we'll bet for the next couple years in an exclusive deal, FanDuel backed the Brinks truck up to our office and we have never been more thankful, more excited and more together as we promote the greatest sports book on planet Earth.
This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. You ready? One, two, one, two, three. Bring the bass in. Whew. That's pretty nice. It's a mad funk. This is a little... Get the funk out of my face. Get the funk out of my face. face. This is Mark Maxwell called mm. One Night. It's damn good. Oh. I like that. That does feel pretty good, doesn't it? Happy 420. Welcome back to the show. Um, little wave junkies here. So I think we answer some phone calls, huh? Okay. Ah, I was about to post to something, but I think we answer some phone calls. You know... Kind of see how everybody else is doing on this day. Mm. Sure. There is some other things we could talk about. I guess the Dolphins are still fielding calls for their draft pick that they traded out of and then up to, and then they're around, and now they're maybe making more plays. Maybe they'll move out of six to gather some more draft picks, huh? Wow. Huh? Maybe the Dolphins will be able to build. We'll hear from Gumpy in the second hour. The Hammer Don boys will come in here. Uh, Dilfer says that Mac Jones has a twitchy mind in reference to processing and playing via Albert Breer uh, in the uh, Monday morning quarterback article. He wrote that Mac Trent Dilfer told him that Mac Jones has a photographic memory. That is where Ian Rappaport yesterday came out and said that Mac Jones has a photographic memory because we had not heard that before Ian Rappaport saying it. Did a little bit of research via Trent Dilfer, via Albert Breer's Monday morning quarterback. That is where that stat came from. I guess a team had been meeting with him. They gave him some plays to break down. Then they left that meeting. He had other meetings. They came back later and asked him to break down the first play basically that they gave him he went ahead and just unloaded everything that would make a lot of sense because what he did with that Steve Sarkeesian offense last year that had motions and things that he had to remember and uh, defenses he had to read which is why it was so efficient because he knew what everybody was supposed to do including the defense on every single play that Alabama offense was fucking stout we didn't think Joe Burrow's year was ever going to be able to be topped and then just one year after that in a COVID season with no fans a new quarterback came onto the scene and for the first six, seven weeks was matching what Joey Burrow was able to do. Absolutely lit it up, became a Heisman finalist. Now he's the conversation piece around pick number three because Zach Wilson is now number two. Justin Fields, though, we've been told by Dr. Gold, not by Dr. Goldman, by somebody who allegedly got Dr. Goldman standards results, that he is also an incredibly intelligent quarterback. I would assume in the recall portion of the Goldman test, which is what he did well at, or the intelligence uh, part, he scored the highest in the history of anybody that scored or played in the NFL or whatever. Let's assume he potentially has a photographic memory as well. Is this just normal for the new school? Is this just a normal thing for people to have these super minds? Because when Luck had it, it was like, oh, this is unbelievable. It used to be just considered. Now Mac Jones yeah. has a photographic memory weapon, by the way. That would make a lot of sense on why a lot of teams are potentially very high on him. That, is, that recall is what quarterbacks live by. Aaron Rodgers told us this past season that a defense gave him a look that he remembered from year two of him playing yeah. or year three of him playing, and he remembered the whole thing. That is why it's so important. Now, you got to get to year 15 or whatever the hell it is to have that happen, but that's potentially why Mac Jones is climbing so much. Well, and do you think a team like the Broncos who's trying to trade up to four, like they have you know two or three guys on the board that's like, hey, we are fine with any of them. Them, whoever the Niners take, they take. We'll take Jones. We'll take Fields. We'll take Lance, even depending on who the Niners could go with. You're talking about the uh, Falcons doing that? Yeah, the Falcon, uh, the Broncos trading up, trading up to, to, yeah, get, to, to get the Broncos. Yeah, yeah, that's 100. percent Sorry about that. I was uh, listening over here. The that is 100 percent what anybody that trades the four is thinking. Yeah, because right? mm-hmm. that's like Tom Telesco told us. They were sitting at six or whatever, and they needed a quarterback. Everybody knew they were getting a quarterback, and they said that they were going to let the Bengals and Dolphins basically figure out how the quarterbacks are going to go. They didn't feel as if the other two teams, Washington and I forget who else, that were in the top five uh, or top three or whatever, they weren't going to go quarterback. So they basically said whoever – Tom Telesco actually told us, whoever – we ended up with, we were happy with. Yeah. So if it would have been Tua, cool. If Joe Burrow somehow slips down, 
cool. They just so happen to get the guy that looks like is going to be a guy for 10 years, and that's kind of how they, they viewed all three of those quarterbacks. They're in a good position. I would assume whoever gets the four feels the same and way. That's why the six pick is so interesting, too, right? Because if there is one more quarterback left, and obviously the Bengals aren't going to go quarterback, that six pick becomes the same thing where it's like, hey, we like all five of these guys. Whoever comes to six, we can just get. Can you put the draft order back up there real quick? This is if we try to predict here, now we're nine days out. So the Bengals, then, you would have to assume if the four goes, somebody's like, okay, quarterback uh, is going at four, just like everybody. Three, you obviously go quarterback. That means five, if you want a quarterback, automatically becomes a very – so there's a chance that if four goes Kyle Pitts, let's say Falcons go Kyle Pitts, yeah. that five draft pick, which the Bengals never do, never really trade it doesn't really seem like something they do like this is this is kind of how we operate here now granted they were active in the offseason they still have no indoor facility mm. <laughs> but that could get very expensive yeah. yeah i mean there's a chance that there's a lot of moves to be made and, and Rappaport said it yesterday he was like if four can go two different ways if somebody goes quarterback a lot of things change probably Bengals pick up pits probably yeah. and then mm-hmm. just kind of move along if if they get traded out though and another and they go Kyle Pitts and then at five then everybody wants to become a Bengal fan or a Bengal trader it's um there's a lot of shit that could pop off I think oh, a little yeah. bit worried about it well yeah. and especially if the Bengals think that they can trade back and either get uh Slater or uh Sewell, the two linemen that, you know, they need to protect Joe Burrow. So if they feel like they yeah, can trade back you can back probably to, come down to seven or eight if you yeah, really yeah. Even nine with the Broncos. Look at this. You know? Look at this. Here now we we're go. piecing some things together. The thing that sucks is for the draft spectacular, uh, we're trying to make graphics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. <laughs> a lot There's a lot of things <laughs> that could happen this year. Now, I assume every draft – has potential storylines that could happen. But this year, and this might be a sign of things to come, it feels like there's a lot more potential action. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It feels I, like there's a lot more. I mean, more. even at two, it doesn't feel like Wilson's locked in at two anymore just because of all this news around the other quarterback. Well, then it, at three is a massive question mark, and the sports books are even changing yeah. each day on who they think. Mac Jones was locked in at number three overall. He has another pro day, second pro day. Some people say it didn't look good. He was still locked in. Justin Fields has a second pro day. All of a sudden, Justin Fields goes to number three overall pick. Mac drops down. Trey Lance is there. Trey Lance has his second pro day yesterday. His odds moved up a little bit, not as much as Justin Fields did or Mac Jones did. So nobody has a clue what's going on anywhere. I think Zach Wilson is pretty locked in. I think so, too. They're talking about, too, how how heavily involved Shanahan was in Trey Lance's pro day. So, like, I mean – I don't know. I, I don't think Mac Jones is going third anymore. I think he's going to end up being kind of like I don't really? want to say the odd man out. Really? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, like you said, the sports books typically, I no. think they tend to know something that we don't. And if you saw Fields make that big of a leap after his pro day, then they're definitely hearing something or they know something that we don't. Let's go to Lucas in New Mexico. What's going on, Lucas? All right, Lucas. Luke. Lukey. Come on. Enjoying 420. Yeah, Luke's high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, moving slow. What am I? Down there in Carol. No, I'm here. Yeah. 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 Lucas, <laughs> welcome to the show, man. What do you want to talk about? Hey, man, I just wanted to say uh, thank you guys for all the fucking hard work y'all put in to thank you. put on all the podcasts out of the PMI offices, and uh, y'all provide daily entertainment for me. And uh, Shout out you, Lucas. My question is, my question is uh, what do you guys think about Carolina trading – number eight pick teddy bridgewater and maybe a late round pick for the number four pick and we get kyle pitt to support old sammy darnold okay listen if you're gonna get uh, everybody's saying kyle pitts is the guy i don't know if you have to go to four to do that and i'm not 100 percent sure if the falcons are going to be you know cooperative trading partners with somebody within their own division but it's like Four could be Kyle Pitts' it's time to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you're that high on him, like let's say the Carolina Panthers absolutely love him. Let's say Matt Rule absolutely loves him as a football player and GM and, and Tepper are all in. I mean, maybe you go. I don't think the Falcons are going to let you do that. I, I just, I'm not 100% sure, but that is where will Kyle Pitts go? Yeah. <laughs> that's the, the next question. Where, what team, is there going to be a team that's going to try to get you hear media people talk about him? They are infatuated by him. Mm-hmm. Coaches have told sources to either, you know, either me or other people Mm -hmm. like, hey, this guy is the guy. You watch him play last year. I think I saw him play two plays, and I was like, oh, there's – 
There's a men's league player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a guy. There's a guy that's not supposed to be. And it feels like right now with the growth of the tight end position, somebody might get a little bit anxious to go up there and get him and be oh, yeah. like, hey, we got a George Kittle, Travis Kelsey. Uh-huh. Right. We got a guy all of a sudden. We got a Gronk. We got a guy. We can really – and if it's Sam Darnold, I, I'm sure Sam Darnold will fucking love getting a tight end. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, Danny Jeremiah said it last week. He was like, hey, gun to my head, no questions asked. Kyle Pitts is the best player in this draft. Let's go to Devontae in North Carolina. De- everybody said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's going on, Pat and the boys? Hey, just hanging out, Devontae. What do you want to talk about? Nah, much. What's up with all the disrespect with uh, Kyle Trash from the Gators? Well, I think what you just heard us say there about Kyle Pitts, everybody's kind of saying about Trask. Like, Devontae, they're saying you could have been a great quarterback last year if you had Kyle Pitts playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he was the defense away from the beating Alabama. Okay, Devontae, a little bit more respect he's saying for Kyle Trask. Look for him to go, like, third round, maybe, yeah. fourth round. All of a sudden get a backup role, somebody gets hurt, Kyle Trask comes out there and lights it up, you know? That's happened a lot of times. And in – Kyle Trask, I think, is kind of a victim of circumstance, and it feels like um, I haven't really heard many, and we we have to be completely transparent here. I rely on QB people that I respect to tell me how quarterbacks are. Right. Yeah. Should I watch film on every single one of my should? Okay, I understand that's a fault of mine. I should watch every single play mm-hmm. that all of these guys have. I should watch every single one so I can give you my – haven't heard a lot of heat about Kyle Trask at all. I'm not – I don't fully understand it either, Devontae, because somebody had to throw the ball to Kyle Pitts, and Kyle Pitts is talked about as being the greatest player of all time in this particular draft, which also goes against Kyle Trask. It's like he had a guy that was, you know, four grades ahead of everybody he was playing against. And you had the Tony guy who's also a projected first-round wide receiver, but I think the Saints were the only team I've seen that were, like, really high on Kyle Trask and even then that was from BR Gridiron hey, so we can't trust uh, you know, uh, uh, everything uh, coming out of hacks. Hacks. Now, they, they, they take they a do. lot of hacks so I think Bleach Report Gridiron does great work but they have led us into a beehive yeah. on numerous occasions yeah. I mean numerous the thing about the Saints is they got a guy Ooh. who went from number one overall to being laughed at <laughs> but he's working harder than everybody else at the position that's, that's right, right. Jameis Winston is the best. Oh, yeah. Jameis Winston, I hope. Okay, listen, after just threw a touchdown in the playoffs oh. last year, one year behind Drew Brees in the New Orleans Saints, saying it's like the Harvard of quarterbacking, getting a chance to go there. One year removed from having the NFL record for pass yards, in uh, that, leading the NFL in pass yards for a season. Also having the most interceptions in a season, mm. getting LASIK, okay, there going to the Saints. So much so that Sean Payton's like, hey, coming back, and Drew Brees is on the sideline saying, this is your team now. Your team. Your city. See this arm? It's falling off. It's <laughs> <laughs> your team now. I'll send you some smoothies yeah. Yeah. and proteins and diamonds. And everything else, I'm in business, but this is your team now. We saw it. Everybody says it's Jameis' team. Jameis saying, yeah, I'm going to own this opportunity. He was speaking at a camp. This is what Jameis had to say. Right? I went from being a number one draft pick to being everybody laughing at me. But guess what? I'm about that business. Mm-hmm. I'm outworking everybody at my position. I know that right here. Dak Prescott <laughs> standing right I'm next doing, to him. I'm doing, day, day by, I'm doing things every single day. Commit to the dream. Because that's the thing. We have to go back to being little kids about this football game because this is a kid's game that men play. Ain't that right, Nick O'Leary? We love this game. Ain't that right? So always have that little kid feeling. There's Nick O'Leary. Yeah, I mean, how here we go. So y'all bless. All right? We done had some tough days out here in this month, man. It's been tough, but you're going to have challenging days, man. But I encourage each and every one of you to have faith and belief in yourself above any coach, above any teammate, above any friend that you have, Uh right? Because James said it best. Man, sometimes we on top of the world. But at the end of the day, only God and yourself know what you're really going through. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your brothers can't even define what you're really going through, and sometimes you don't even want to tell them. Bingo. But trust in yourself. Trust in the Lord, first and foremost. Um, Then trust in yourself. Amen. Jameis, yeah. Hey, that's a much better speech than the Eaton Dubs. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh-huh. came a long way. Right. He went to he went to the Harvard quarterback school down there in New Orleans. Came on the other side of it with a much better motivational speech. I'm excited for the uh, one for me, two for you, three for us, yeah. four for them, five for that, everybody. Yeah.
you know, I think that Drew Brees speech before the games. I'm excited for Jameis to potentially get into a Lamborghini that is a Sean Payton offense. Now, they had to cut like eight, nine players from that very, very, very good team to get under the salary cap because they were playing with house money there for a little bit, it felt like. But still, Sean Payton is a mastermind. Kamara is unbelievable. Uh, Michael Thomas is still down there. They're going to be a great team, and Jameis is going to get a chance to see if everything that was in Tampa was bullshit or not. I also love that he, you know, Dak, coming off an incredibly gruesome injury who's going to have to work so, so hard to get back to how he was that Jameis makes no bones about Like, listen, I know Dax here. I'm working way harder than this son of a bitch is. I love that. <laughs> I didn't even think about the injury. Because I, I, whenever he said, I know Dax standing right here. Mm-hmm. Dax standing, by the way, yeah. with a ball in his hand. Uh-huh. Coach across his head, probably coaching some drills, throwing some mm-hmm. balls. Nobody would have thought he would have been able to do that right now whenever no. that injury happened, which was potentially labeled a cramp. Right. Initially, yeah. yep. one of the guys. <laughs> Looks like a cramp. I'm, I'm outworking everybody at my position. Now, this guy defied science. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> His leg almost snapped off last year. <laughs> and listen, his ass can't keep up with what I'm doing. Uh-uh. And by the way, everybody we talk to around Jameis is like, that's almost his like detriment is he works so hard. So I believe him. Now, oh, yeah. Dak's been doing probably four or five hours of rehab every single day plus workouts on top of that. <laughs> but Jameis was just getting the point across like, hey, it doesn't matter what's being said about you or what you've done in the past. It's all about what you do in the future. you got to have faith in yourself. I respect it. That was a much better speech than the Eaton Dubs, but – Putting the Dak, Dak Prescott surgery recovery <laughs> yeah. into perspective mm-hmm. is something that I don't think. When Jameis thought of that speech, he wasn't thinking about a scientific miracle no. standing right next to no, him. No, he wasn't. That involves a lot of work, by the way. Oh, yeah. You got to teach your entire leg how to walk. He had to teach his entire leg how to be the proper direction again, mm-hmm. then how to walk again, each individual little muscle. And now he's already back playing things. What has Jameis been doing? He's been working <laughs> yeah, harder. He's been doing harder. <laughs> more than <laughs> more. <laughs> Jeez. Let's go, to, uh, let's go to Reed in Florida. What's going on, Reed? Hey, hey, Pat. Um, I just wanted to say shout out to you and the boys. Happy 420. Shout out, shout out. What do you want? Shout out you, dude. What's going on? Happy 420, brother. Um, well, I, I wanted to let you guys know, like, I was the Aaron Rodgers mustache account. Oh, oh, congrats. Oh, wow. All right. Hey, congrats, man. Real. Happy to hear it's a real person back there. Now, this could be bullshit. True. Because it's uh, just no, a name no. on a phone, but in a name on a Twitter account. But mm-hmm. we're sending money somewhere, so congrats, man. Yeah. Congrats yeah. to whoever. Right. Congrats to whoever. I just if it... wanted to say um, thank, you, like, thank you guys because this is, like, life-changing for me and my girlfriend. And, like, this is honestly, like, one of the best days of my life. And I just can't thank you guys enough. Hey, we're lucky to do it, man. Great guest. Appreciate you for following along. And his girlfriend, life changing. That's Here we awesome. Go. 420, what do you think you're going to buy? $7,500 worth of dope? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Change like like it. Change <laughs> his life. Change his life. Change his life. He told me yesterday he's taking his girlfriend at Universal. That's the first time she's ever been there. So. Oh, oh chivalry is not dead. Dreams come true. Oh, boy, Reed. Diner in Florida. Congratulations. We don't know if that's. No, he, his no, name is Reed on here as well. So. Oh, okay, so Zito has had to reach out personally. Yeah. His name is Reed, potentially actual Reed there. Congrats to him, 7,500 bucks. There was three people that had it in the same minute. Oh. Man, but the thing about <laughs> yeah. a minute, 60 seconds, there's a lot of time in there. Yeah, you got to right. be quicker than that. I had somebody uh, tweet me and tell me that their friend, you know, had it in the same minute or whatever, and I'm like, I understand. But the rules is the rules. Yeah. yeah. What am I doing? Stern but fair. Stern but fair. I think we put it out there. If you're first, you win. If there is a tie. I don't know, there's a lot of new songs, it feels like, on here. Really? Or I've scrolled to a new section of the playlist. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This is Dan Lebowitz, Never You Mind. Ooh. Okay. It's jamming. A little bit of a heater. Happy 420, everybody. Hour one's wrapping up in hour two. We'll have AJ Hawk join us. We'll take some more phone calls. Then a sitting congressman will join us in hour three. Yeah. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Gonna have to ask him about dope. Have to. <laughs> hey, when are you getting that done? Huh? I just thought about that. <laughs> Should I tell him I'm going to ask about dope? Nah, I think you just got to hammer him with it. Hey, business is business. (laughs) Is is he the guy to push sports gambling in Ohio as well? Oh, there it is. We're back on the other side. It's the Pat (laughs) Magnus Show. I don't know what to do.
Welcome to the Blender, the home of a team and a fan base on a playoff push the likes the world has never seen before. Crescent City, get on your feet for tonight's starting lineups. Brought to you by Sprite, an incredibly refreshing drink. Starting at forward was the number two overall pick in the 2016 NBA Draft. Now he's an NBA All-Star, Brandon Ingram. At forward, this man has been dunking on little white kids on the internet for 10 years. The incomparable, unstoppable, six foot six phenom Zion Williamson at center standing at eight feet tall from Georgia Tech number 22 Derek Baver This man's family had a reality show in Lithuania. He was born and raised in LA, but he found his J in Vienna. Lonzo Ball! And the OG of the roster. On the court, he's a monster. Braids hanging, shots banging. It's not Drew, it's Drew Holiday! Let's get this done! Thank you very much. Go Pelicans! the day I signed, then my whole contract with Indy. <laughs> oh, damn, dude. Why did you decide to turn down a lot of money to come back to Indianapolis for the year? True story, no bull. I prayed about it. By three o'clock, I'm, I'm signing somewhere. And then 2.55, I got the phone with Chris. Like, are we gonna get this done? Like, how can we get this done? He, he came up with a number and I'm like, all right, it's all right. Well, I guess it's meant for me to go to this next team. As soon as I closed his message, Earth say text me. I said, uh, there go my sign right there. Like, <laughs> when he, he texts me, that's when we got it done. When he texts me, we got it done. Hey, what, did you see my eyes tweet um, yesterday? Yeah, is that when you got the text from Mercy? No, that was a text that I was, was almost gone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, where are we going to go? Hey. hey. You don't have to tell us, obviously, but I do believe Baltimore was in on something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also the quarterback. Nah, that's also what it was. That's what it was.
The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. Hour two on this fantastic 420. We'll begin immediately following this beat drop from Twine. Bang, there it goes. Here we go. Joining us, the Hammer Don Boys and a man who's a college football national champion and Super Bowl champion, AJ Hawk. What's up, AJ? How you doing, pal? You smoking dope over there? No, I'm not. How you doing, man? I, I guess you're probably not uh, partaking in 420 this year. Nah, I can't because I'm in Indiana. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, a, that's a shame. Yeah, you know, I have had my vitamins, though. I have of course. I have had my vitamins today. But since I'm in Indiana, and it sounds like there's a potential governor's uh, helicopter about to land on our studio right now, I am not partaking. I wish I could one day. Ohio, I think. Don't you guys have medicinal over there or no? Yeah, it's medicinal here. It, what is it in Indi- Indianapolis? Nothing? A uh, band. Yeah. 25 to life. <laughs> the full state, not just Indianapolis. I, I apologize to the rest of the state. Yeah. Well, the whole the whole state wishes they weren't associated with that. I, I mean, there's something, you know, sports gambling came through pretty quick. But just yeah. a few years ago, you couldn't buy beer on Sunday. So I'm going to assume that marijuana is going to be a slow roll, even though Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, mm-hmm. Kentucky. I mean, it is starting to become, you know, a little bit surrounding us. You come out with your hands on your head, Indiana. You are surrounded <laughs> by weed at this particular time. So maybe that'll expedite through this entire COVID process, but we are currently not able to celebrate uh, 420, but we hope everybody else does. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, that wants to do it responsibly. Okay, do it responsibly because we don't want to hear it. AJ, did you get a chance to hear Jameis Winston's new pump-up speech? Did you hear this thing? He has taken massive leaps and bounds since the Eaton dubs. Now, Dak Prescott's right next to him as Todd pointed out, has had to come back from like a scientific miracle basically to be walking again. And that probably took a lot of work. James is working harder. I think James is showing real signs of like, hey, going to be a guy, AJ. I mean, this is definitely better than his eat and dub speech. Ah, and everyone can ah. agree to that. But yeah. I, I think I saw the part of where Ty even said like, the best part is at the end when he, he talks about how like, yeah, he knows Dak is there, but it doesn't matter, man. I'm grinding more harder than anybody else on the planet. It doesn't matter who you are. I wish, I wish there was, like, every starting quarterback in the NFL was there, and he would go down the line and give reasons. <laughs> I know like Dak's he here. Him. Hey, scientific miracle. Dak's not even supposed to be walking right now. He's probably had to do a bunch of rehab. Don't fucking matter. Okay, excuse me. Aaron Rodgers with host in Jeopardy. Yeah. This guy's host of Jeopardy. Yeah. What do you think I'm doing? I'm dodging balls. <laughs> wow. I'm dodging balls, dude. I'm running on my heels. I'm doing this all day. Okay, I'm bear crawling. Remember the bear crawling? Oh, that came oh out? yeah. The boxing that came out? Oh, yeah. Jameis is nonstop. He's not hosting Jeopardy. No. <laughs> Tom Brady, I know you're 45. Oh, he's playing catch who? David Beckham getting picked off, by the way, <laughs> yeah. by David Beckham. Yeah. Hey, I'm working. I ain't on no beach. I love it. And to be fair, people that I know that have been around Jameis have said, like, Guy works his ass off. That's all he does is just work, work, work all day. I appreciate it. The Saints are hoping that it pays off, unlike, you know, potential outcomes in Tampa Bay, even though he threw for a lot of yards. He couldn't see a damn thing. How, how hard do you think it would be to be a blind quarterback? <laughs> um, I, I, I don't think that we've had one yet, at least in the NFL. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Jameis led the NFL in passing. Yeah. yeah. Blind. Mm-hmm. Got LASIK immediately following that season. Let's assume he's only going to get better. I believe uh, – Two megastars in this Super League that is the NFL are currently uh, maybe going back and forth on the internet. A Kansas City Royals baseball player. uh, Sometimes words speak louder than actions. And they showed a video of somebody wearing a Tom Brady jersey. And then he's a Royals player who screams back, Patrick Mahomes is the best or something. And a Kansas City Royals, part owned by Patrick Mahomes, said, you know, sometimes words speak louder than actions. And then Tom Brady goes, nah. I think actions always speak louder than words. Oh, Oh, it's getting deep. And then Patrick Mahomes, did he respond? I guess we will see in 20 years what an answer. What an an answer. That is just a what, what. Hey, see me in two decades, pal. Now, to be completely clear, uh, that's good internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Both parties there, by the way. Both parties. Tom Brady's been doing good internet for a long time. Mm -hmm. now. Tom Brady is good internet. Patrick Mahomes, good internet here. This is good. Kansas City Royals, by the way, even playing a little bit of the game. Good internet in this entire thing. With that being said, this is just like the LeBron Jordan conversation. Mm. Okay? LeBron's in the middle of his career. Is he going to be the greatest whenever he's done? When's it going to be done? Five years from now? Do we have any idea when he's going to be done? He might win 17 more championships. Yeah. We have no idea. So the conversation about, like, who's the greatest of all time? Guy's still playing. Can we just appreciate it and then judge when it's all said and done? Patrick Mahomes is going to be compared to Tom Brady every single year of his career, and it's going to be impossible to try to catch. And if he does, that conversation will then turn to who's the next person that's going to potentially be. It's like, can we just enjoy this and then judge it later? Not whenever they're talking shit to each other. No, no. way. I guess we got to judge it. I guess we have to, AJ. <laughs> Hey, who, so who was the player on the Royals wearing the Tom Brady jersey? I'm guessing, did he lose a bet with somebody? I, I would assume something like that, or maybe, I don't know why. Would, That's what's, I'm just baseball. thinking like marketing-wise. <laughs> For the Royals, I feel like it's a good job in marketing. Like, why just do things to get people talking about your team? Hey, Patrick Mahomes is one of our owners. All right, let's come out and just go ahead and talk shit about Tom Brady. Uh -huh. Patrick doesn't know we're doing this, but we're going to put him to a little bit of a firestorm. Yeah. Tom Brady will come out and do perfect internet, which is what Tom Brady does. And then Patrick Mahomes responds. It's just... That's a beautiful thing. I like that a lot. But they are stirring the narrative that we're going to have to judge them forever. And I think Patrick Mahomes realizes that that's how it's going to go. It's Salvador Perez. Okay, he's a good ball player. Yeah, here we go, Sal. He lost a bet. He was not happy wearing that thing. Not he had the name taped up before. Oh, the Brady? Yeah, and then some guy on the Royals came and ripped it off. And he oh, said, wow. no, 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 Patrick Mahomes is the best. Yeah. He's his boss, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. smart move by that Smart guy. move. If I, yeah. He had a bet with Maverick Phillips. Great name. Wow, yeah, Maverick. I, good for baseball for us to learn that that guy exists. <laughs> By the way, Maverick Phillips and Salvatore Perez had a bet where I assume the loser would have to wear one or the other. He's not happy. He says that his boss is actually the best. Good internet mo moment happens afterwards. I like it. Happy 420 to everybody. You think? Yeah. No, no, no. You think more. either of those guys did uh, the tweet? Patrick or Tom? Oh, Diggs. Come on. Oh, yes. oh, Diggs. I mean, Tom's definitely got a team. Tom's I think Patrick. I think it's pretty safe to say that Patrick does his own. Twitter. I think so. Too, I mean, honestly, I don't. I think obviously Tom has a team that puts stuff out, but I, this could have been it, Tom. Like, it might not have been a, an assistant or somebody running his marketing crew. All right. Nine minutes an hour, two. It's 420. There ain't really much to talk about. Let's get into this. How do we feel about people that have people run their entire Twitter accounts. I, I don't appreciate it at all. I think it's maybe the dumbest thing of all time. And I guess it works for some people, but that's- Are you- Are you, is it really working then? It's not really working. But are you saying, are you saying you don't like when somebody has someone else run their account, but poses as them? Some people say like, yeah. and there's some celebrities that have said stupid things like, hey, I turned my Twitter over to my team and it's not me now and it's strictly promotional. Like, why would you follow that account? Anyway? Well, yeah, then what's the purpose of the account? You might yeah. as well just have the team. Like, Nick will tweet videos of me doing live things, and we'll send it out there. So Nick does that. But aside from that, if it's not me tweeting, why would I ever in a million fucking years want somebody else speaking for me? No. Like, I, I just, yeah. I don't understand why you would ever want that. That's what Twitter is supposed to be for, for you to speak for yourself. I don't know why you would want somebody else to speak for you. I've had people that tell me, you know, that they run somebody else's Twitter account. And I immediately, upon hearing that, I lose respect for that person, and then I hate this person. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like... Really? Well, I like the person, obviously. It's incredibly talented, but it's like, you're kind of fraudulent. I mean, there's people that believe... I don't know. It's just a... I guess it's met, a little bit of magic. I've met somebody that, that runs some pretty high-profile Twitter accounts, and I think you know this person as well. <laughs> I really, really have enjoyed this person that runs these high-profile accounts. <laughs> okay, so the person that you and I were talking about right there, incredibly entertaining. I was not referring to that person okay. in my... Con <laughs> <laughs> that person is hilarious, by the way, and has to have like seven personalities yeah <laughs> a lot of masks this person yeah. unbelievable you're right but i'm just talking about the standard slapdick you know that yeah. he's just like kind of conning people into believing that they're good at social media so let me run your whole thing i'll be the voice for you and it's like until something happens and then all of a sudden it's not you all of a sudden it's everybody else well, and that's why like russell wilson should change his handle to like team three because then we know yeah. okay hey the whole team is putting these out. It's not just Russell Wilson. He's the guy. He's the star. But the team is part of this. Somebody puts a dash with the person's name if it's actually from them, from their Twitter account. Yeah. And every time yeah. I read it, I'm like, oh, okay. So. Actually yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> 
I love it. But some people are busy. AJ, you know, I just. For, I'm okay. Like if Robert De Niro, they tell him like, hey, we really need a Twitter account for you to make, you know, sad grandpa four. Like we need to promote the thing. He has a team. But like sad grandpa. He younger Jesus people Christ. know. So little respect, disrespect. AJ, one of the Bro, what was that called? Time, what was that called? The, the intern? The intern. The intern yeah. was good. <laughs> it was good so movie. good, dude. Such a good idea, by the way. She was a hustler, yeah. by the way. Yeah. I need to make a second one of those. Yeah, absolutely. And I cannot believe they shut down that newspaper factory. Man. You know? I cannot believe it's it. It's a shame. Damn shame. The fact that he got to go back to work in there oh, in the same best. spot. Oh. It doesn't happen. And he no. saved their relationship. It did, didn't it? Well, she, she uncovered was, an affair. Yeah, he, yeah. That she was getting bag. cheated on. Yeah, yeah. fucking yeah. scum messed bag. up. He's out there just slinging cock. <laughs> Nanny's all over town. De Niro's got to deal with it on the other end. He yeah. doesn't even care. He's just out there salami for you. <laughs> Salam for you too. Yeah, Humble. that's exactly. That's how I remember that character. In the movie. A younger De Niro yeah. would fucking cut his head off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, you're making my life fucking terrible. Over there. <laughs> okay, I got to deal with the backside of this thing. Keep your dick in your pants. I kind of needed to hear that from somebody. De Niro, what else did De Niro do? He was on those super platform shoes because they made him look taller than four the foot Irishman. tall. Yep. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Those uh -huh. photos were very fucked up that they meet got the, out. Meet the Parents was like, that was a good deal for him. Oh, he, yeah. he switched the comedy a little bit. Oh, it's just a game, Fogger. <laughs> <laughs> good, good fellas, obviously. I've never seen that movie. Jesus. Oh, you'd oh. love it. You'd love it. I know, but I've seen the... Oh, yeah. The, the stiller spike. Yeah. It's just a game fucker. What were you saying? Good fellas, obviously. Uh, unbelievable. Casino. Uh, yeah, heat. casino. Heat, raging taxi. bull, taxi driver. Do yeah. these, you know, like for instance, Vin Diesel is Dom Toretto now. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. But he's made so much money, he doesn't care, Correct. right? A lot of those actors are like, I don't want to be typecasted. I want to display my range. And then some of the guys are like, yeah, I made a movie like this once. It worked. Let's make 40 of them. Yeah. And Vinny's making music now, too. He's he's completely oh, expanding his whole yeah. entire too repertoire. Bad. I don't diesel. know you, but it feels like I do. Heater. Yeah. Don Vin Toretto. Diesel's making music? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You're yeah, welcome. Yeah, yeah. I should add it to my Patty 420 list. Yeah. <laughs> dude, show your kids. They'll love you forever. Yeah, dude. I made a... Oh, we can't okay. play it. Is he independent? He's probably independent. Oh, I believe he's with the Kygo uh, record label, so I do not think he's independent. I was about to just blast that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Vin the Dom will come after me. <laughs> no. He's working Vin about might. Fast 9. Exactly. He's, he's actually about... made more money being Groot than Fast and the Furious. Oh, he's oh, on racetrack record, yeah. dude. He's on racetrack record. Yeah, but he's, not, he's Groot, though. He's not Vin Diesel. I think For sure, yeah. I think it's his record label. I think Vin's got a record label. Oh, so. Ooh. Let it eat. You know, I mean, Vin's got... <laughs> no. yeah, he founded... Everybody in the back is shaking their head. <laughs> <laughs> he founded <laughs> racetrack <laughs> records. Which makes sense because he's out there driving around in yeah. trucks and stuff. Oh, Groot, okay. what is Groot? Uh, that's from the uh, Avengers. I am Groot. Yeah, Marvel. Marvel. Marvel, yeah. Oh. That's, uh, that's Batista. Tree, Doesn't Batista play that? No, he's also in Groot. Vin Diesel, does. Vin, on, Vin Diesel does the Groot voice in 1,000 languages. Yeah. Okay, so real quick. Batista's Groot and Vin Diesel's no, Groot? Just Vin Diesel. Batista's a different character. I was about to say, they have a type. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Bald dude. With the, Groot, <laughs> with the Groot character. I don't know. Let's go to some phone calls. Batista's, I mean, that's his entire thing now, right? Is he's that massive yoked up guy in that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're making more, too. Imagine, he's just, what is, he has to work out all day, every day to look like that, AJ? I mean, you would think so. He's absolutely jacked. He had an MMA Dom? fight, too, back in the day. Dom Batista. Dom, Dom, Dom Batista, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he's a, I think he's a blue belt or a black belt. I forget. I've seen videos of him walking through the uh, Hoist Gracie uh, Jiu-Jitsu. Well, I guess whenever you get a new belt, you have to walk through everybody, and they just whip the fuck out of you. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've seen the video, and I, I, I think it was a blue or a black belt. I'm not sure. He didn't flinch, by the way. Just walked the entire wow. time. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? This guy... What happens? You just go up to a black belt and you don't have feelings or nerves anymore? How does this even happen? In well, I would imagine because uh, he's not a WWE superstar anymore, he can probably just eat all the steroids he wants too, right? Oh, yeah, because they do test, by sure. the way. Mm -hmm. They do test. Oh, so they are two different people. Uh, so that's Dom Toretto right here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yo, so he grouped. In 2018, got his uh, purple belt. Wow. So could, help, could have more than that at this point. So what... I'm I did not it. know there was a purple. <laughs> oh, yeah. I should know more, I guess. What are the levels? There's a yellow, there's a yellow. I know there's uh -huh. a there's a brown out there. There is oh, a yeah. purple, brown, and black. That's the that's the top three. Oh, purple's way up there? Yeah, so purple, oh, wow. brown, black, and then coral if you're really legit. And I would like and then stripes, Whoa. right? Don't you get stripes or you get a couple a couple stripes on there, yeah. Uh, Blue senior. Shinigami was talking about uh <laughs> uh meat hooks. Uh <laughs> what? 
hooks. Meat hooks. Big smile. <laughs> big smile. There it is. Big smile. They were talking okay. about. They were talking about big smile having a certain amount of uh, stripes. stripes on his yeah. blue belt or whatever. Mm -hmm. I did not know purple was a good one. So listen, you see somebody with a purple belt out there. And listen, don't mess with anybody anymore, especially no. if they look like Dave Batista. But yeah. a purple belt that, that has to be pretty lethal. When was that? Two thousand what? Eighteen. Oh, so he's he, he's yeah. definitely he's, yeah. he's got a brown now <laughs> at least he'll put you in arm bar for sure. Oh, look out! That was Diggs's uh, password. It was yeah, not anymore. <laughs> Five years arm bar because mm -hmm. he got into jujitsu for one summer. <laughs> Did you really, Diggs? How was it? Yeah, it was uh, probably what was that? Two thousand eight when um, that fighting show where they made it the ultimate the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate fighter. fighter ultimate fighter. That was big, so like you know, fucking had to head down to the local jujitsu. <laughs> Just in case. Try it out. <laughs> hey, Dix. I went Dix. twice, and you had to wrestle strangers and like be sweaty with strangers, and I did not enjoy that. Dix so. used to just walk in there with an affliction shirt on, fucking <laughs> ready, dude. <laughs> Whose arms breaking? I did learn the arm bar though, so that was sweet. He was like Ronda Rousey back in her day. They yeah. said Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Wait, so you were you were so enthusiastic about this that your password was armbar for five years after these two jujitsu A long classes. time until yeah. Zito fucking knocked yeah. on me. Yeah, we kind of – because we had to sign into something he had. So it became a very public uh, – it became a very public thing, you know. It was like uh, – I believe the thing was like, Diggs, you have anything private on this or whatever? And Diggs was like, I don't care if it's private, it's public, whatever, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. This was back when Diggs was very reckless with his everything, basically. Yeah, it's armbar. Yeah, what's the password? He goes, yeah, it's armbar or whatever. And everybody just, armbar? What? How, how did it, it started a full conversation. He dove into that whole story. Uh, but Diggs, if he's watching something, exactly. he will transform into what he's watching. It's like a chameleon effect. Look, he still has a cowboy hat on now from the Kevin Costner fucking Montana thing. Mm -hmm. You should have seen the Mad Men one. He was... Oh. Don Draper or whatever every single day. It comes and goes. And that's why the cowboy thing has stuck around a lot longer than yeah. any of us have thought. I don't think a new season has been released anytime soon. Well, I think mostly because of the pandemic, shows are slowly rolling back out. So I haven't had a new show to chameleon back into yet. Ah, you need to watch City of Lies. Did you watch that movie? No, I couldn't think of the name actually last that's night. I'm going to eventually. What, you got dope head? You, you can't remember anything over yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah, it's big dope head over here. Yep. It would be big dope head, by the way. I assume if you put on one of them gas masks, oh. dude, the thing would be so oh, flat the, against the, his face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. It would just be like, the, you would see just the... You'd have to get one of those inflatable helmets that teams run out of to actually, yeah. like, yeah. you know, find something, big, find something big enough to go on there. <laughs> Man, what's up with you white people in these fucking masks? <laughs> One of my teammates. What? What's up with you white people in these fucking masks, man? We're like, just go ahead and tighten that thing up. You're going to be good. He's like, I'm, be, I'm not going to fucking move for, what, two, three hours? <laughs> It'll be worth it. And then he goes, uh -huh. I guess we'll fucking do it. And that's why um, Laramie Tunzel, mm -hmm. yeah. when he hit that gas mask oh. and did not cough. Man. Now, granted, he did not clear it and everything i mean there's a lot of potential stipulations i have never seen a human do what he accomplished i have never seen in my entire life draft night his stock was dropping in my eyes i'm like this guy's a fucking hero how do we get that guy on our team i think i actually texted chuck now i don't know if it was that night or the next day <laughs> but i texted chuck I was like get us Listen, that guy can run two marathons right now. Yeah. Yeah. He might have the best lungs of all time. I've never seen anything like that. And I think at that point, everybody on ESPN was like, Laramie Tunzel's draft stock is tumbling after a video has surfaced that was beer. I'm like, that, that should go up draft boards with what the fuck he just accomplished. We need to get you in one of those, AJ. Maybe. I, I mean, I don't think it would have helped my draft stock at all, but I think I remember well, now, you tweeting. Didn't you tweet that night? So, like, You made a, a solid case. You basically tweeted what you just said, and I started thinking, I'm like, you know what? If I'm a GM, I might have to rethink it. This guy might have jumped up my board. Listen, I'm a GM. I don't do the dope, all right? I don't understand the ins and outs of this whole thing. Uh, let's assume that I don't know. McAfee, noted dope head. <laughs> he says that he's never seen anybody do what he just did. Let's, now we got to judge how many people do we think McAfee has smoked around. Hmm. Sounds like he said a lot the way yeah, he talks. Everyone. <laughs> all right, let's fucking pull the trigger. Yeah, yeah get him. <laughs> what if that, hey, was that, that was a war? Yeah, in the war room, that's the thing. The guy, the GM pulls everybody together, and he's like, "What do you, okay, so what do you guys think? And each guy is naming off players that you have played with that are really good. Oh, he's definitely smoked with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what if it's one scout, too? Like, in the war room, 
you know, because they all have to like pitch their cases. Yeah. What if there's one scout like, all right, who do you got? And the person's like, name a player. Who do you got? Name a player. The GM's like, who do you got? I got Larry Mitanzo and, 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 and everything I've said previously. And listen to this tweet that I just found here. Nobody's ever been able to accomplish what he just accomplished. With. I know we don't like the fact that he's potentially has a gas mask on, but if anybody's going to put a gas mask on, he's the best to ever do it. Yeah. I, I just got my kid. What if? Like if it happens this year and someone's like, well, what's McAfee say about his smoking <laughs> techniques? Because if, if he says they're good, we might need to go get this guy. It is awesome. Smoking with different cultures, it is fantastic. I feel like I've, I've gotten a chance to do that. It is so cool. Yeah. Everybody has very different strategies to go about getting to the same place, though. Everybody's trying <laughs> to get to the same place. Happy 420. Let's get to some phone calls. Uh, let's go to Brandon in Aspen, Colorado, every day over there. Over yeah. Aspen, uh-huh. Where the... Um, Capistrana yeah. flow, the like women flock, like this. <laughs> that's right. Women. We're talking about Aspen. What do you want to talk about, Brandon? Man, sorry, just had oh, it. Oh, oh, man, said it. just thought I'd say what's up to you guys. Uh, AJ used to tackle quarterback. What's up to him? <laughs> nice. He's a Russ Bell kind of guy. guy. I love that song, man. That was a good one. Hey, we did as well, but. The time changed. I mean, we're going to have to get a new one, actually. We, we should probably get a new one. Hey, Trago, fucking get with it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trago, Trago's hey. currently beating colon cancer, by the way. Shout out, Trago. Hey, Trago. Listen, when you find time, okay, in between bad, can we get in? Get, get back we in the lab. We need 10 to 15 more <laughs> Uh, we'll bring that back, Brandon, a remix version on the other side. Trago, by the way, we love you, man. Mm-hmm. Happy 420 to Trago as well. I assume he's potentially getting in there medically. Yeah. Uh, uh, which science has said makes you feel better when something. Uh, there's a list of things that go. This gubernatorial debate that I had to listen to here in Indiana on the local television <laughs> show, I could not take it anymore. When I, when I see real scientific proof. I will then make my decision. I want to go through the TV and smack him right in the fucking mouth. Yep. Here you go. Who, dumb, dumb. Who was it? Bobby Rainwater? Bobby was like, Rainwater. Well, you're wrong. Uh, you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. Let me tell you why. What do you want to talk about, Brandon? Sorry, buddy. Uh, I wanted to talk about those big girls up in the Minnesota Vikings. Okay. Delvin Tomlinson and Michael Pierce. Oh. 700 pounds in the middle. Free agent. Oh. Sue reference to yeah, the big girls. A, yeah, and also the um came up uh, Lizzo? Liz. No, who was the uh who was the other D line? Vita Vea. Vita Vea, yeah, I yeah. guess they that was unbelievable. She oh, did she was a Minnesota, Minnesota Viking. Viking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. I understand where your brain pieced that together, but Jesus Christ, you can't do what you just did. You just she loves where she's at right now. You just can't do what you're doing right there. I mean, we just she was on. DMing Chris Evans the other day, and there's oh, yeah. a whole spew about it on the internet. Well, I guess D tackle is this is the thinnest that's the thinnest position uh-huh. in this draft, mm-hmm. I guess, is D tackle. So I would have assumed that free agent D tackles are pretty hot in the market because the people that are supposed to scout everybody says this is a thin D tackle market. That's gonna probably continue, I would assume, that trend. The D tackle position might be a tough one to find going forward with the change of football, do you think? Yeah, I mean with how spread out everything is, yeah, why would and if you're a young kid and you're thinking about what position you may play wouldn't you want to get on the outside and rush the passer that you know that's where like the glory is you know that's where all the money is so unless you're just a gigantic kid you're probably going to try to at least play outside first i would assume so the d tackles by the way you ever get a chance to talk to d tackles they are the most entertaining people you've ever been around the, the d line room in general if you go into a football facility and you get a chance somehow you become a bazillionaire and you're like, you know what, I want to be entertained. I just got in here and it's meeting time. Just go ahead and pop a squat right into the D-line room. There is something electric that's going to pop off, either it, whether it's in film, a serious time, a non-serious time, a big moment, a non-big moment. Some D-lineman is the most hilarious person you have ever seen in your entire life. Might be a position that gets tough to find as we go along. But if you're smart and you and it are a big boy and you know that everyone else is going out to the edge, you stay in the middle and you get paid like Leonard Williams did, $22 million a year. Leonard Williams got paid. Sue just got, what, a $10 million deal, up to $10 yeah. million. He's gotten paid over $100 million. Shout out to the Dolphins paying him. Who was the guy beforehand that went to Washington? 
Uh, Albert, Albert Hainsworth. Hainsworth. He oh. was the guy there Man. for a while. He used to just pick up offensive linemen and just throw mm-hmm. stomp it on faces. Casey Hampton, big snacks. Oh, Casey oh, Hampton yeah. was the best. He used to show up to camp every year, <laughs> at least 15 to 20 over. And it was a big story every year. And then I, it did not appear as if he lost any weight and he was mm. starting every game. Yeah. Vince <laughs> Wilfork also, yeah. you know, Legend. Was showing up pretty big. What he started swimming. He started getting yeah. into swimming, I guess. So he hit Donald Brown one time so hard, I thought Donald was dead. I thought Donald <laughs> Brown was dead. <laughs> Donald, it was, and I think Donald would even say like that was the worst moment of my life. <laughs> he got through. I think he thought he was getting through the whole. By the way, Donald Brown was a good running back there yeah. for a while, mm-hmm. both at Connecticut and for Indy. I don't remember necessarily what happened. Draft class, I, I really don't. But he squirted through the hole or whatever, and it was just a. He went sideways. I've never <laughs> seen anything like it. It was like. Oh, that's Vince Wolfrick. And that was whenever he was up there with Robert Kraft and they were like best friends. Oh, yeah, kissing. Yeah, he was of course. the man. I guess Aaron Donald's a D-tackle. Okay, so if you can be Aaron yeah. Donald, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Good he, luck. He, he heard what you said, like all the money's going outside. And he was like, I'm going to be built like an outside guy, but I'm going to play in here. I'm just going to be stronger than everybody. He was awesome. Aaron, I mean, Aaron Donald can play wherever he wants, yeah. but there, there's only – there's very, very few Aaron Donalds to ever come through the NFL. I think a guy with his speed and athleticism, how powerful he is. Yeah, I mean, yeah you just got to hope that Pittsburgh creates another one. Yeah. Mm. That's just what you got to hope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they will. They will. It's just when is that time going to be? When's well, the next Aaron Donald come through? Well, this is what Pittsburgh does, by the way. Pittsburgh just creates that type of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe Pittsburgh will keep a couple positions alive. Ooh. You know what I mean? Fullback. Fullback, D-tackle. tackle uh-huh. Probably guard. We'll probably have some guards. <laughs> I mean, AQ just retired, so the center position, we need to go ahead and have yeah. a, rep- a little representative out there. Well, and they can just bring in J.J. Watt in a couple of years, maybe, too, and have him just move inside oh, and outside his brother. All right, let's go to – hey, is that normal, or does J.J. get special privileges there? Every time I see him mic'd up, I hear the conversation go where he's like, hey, I, I want to beat the shit out of 71 today. And he tells the rest of the D-line, like, all right, I'm gonna line up over here. He's like, Tess. is that Aaron Donald? I think does the same thing where he'll start somewhere from his film study, and then it's like, ah, if this isn't going how I thought it was, I'm gonna go over here and ruin this person's life. <laughs> and if it works out well, this is where I'm gonna stay the entire time. Is that kind of how it is for skilled pass rushers all across the board? Yeah, it's it's definitely somewhat common. They'll, they'll usually have a plan going into the week, whether you know if it's an outside guy or inside. They'll have a plan on where you're gonna rush, how you're gonna rush. But yeah, throughout the game, I think. Guys like J.J. will have a lot more freedom to kind of move around as much as he wants. Usually guys will come and they'll talk after the series with the D-line coach and D-line coach and all of them get together. Hey, man, you you know, it's not going great. You, you move to the shade. You go to the three technique on the other side. And What's shade? Better What's luck. shade mean? What's a shade mean? Shade, like uh, if you had an offensive line, center guard tackle, you know how, the, how it's numbered? Inside shade of the guard is a one, head up two, three on the outside. You always hear three technique? Yeah, even right, odd left. No. Same numbers both sides. This isn't that's, oh, that's the side. offense when you're in like okay. third grade. Got it, got like, it. Like twenty four, two forty six, four That's what they teach you. Yeah, go thirty five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A, a zero technique would be head up on the center. So a shade is just shaded left or right, one side. Oh, okay, sounds good. Where, where, if you could play a D line, where would you want to play? I probably would not want to be the shade. I'd want to be a th- nice wide three technique so you could pass rush a little bit. Yeah, you can eat a little guard maybe into a tackle, kind of go ahead and into that game. Yeah, of course. They always want to be wide. They Like D linemen, they want to be in a wide three too. Like if you were in a passing situation, we would call it in Green Bay, jet just means like they can get wide and they get to rush the passer and they don't have to worry about being a shade or a one or a three or whatever. Yeah, you got to watch when you're playing Tom Brady though because he'll see those wide to spread out three yep. techniques mm-hmm. and he'll go right up the gut for eight, nine yards at a time, <laughs> stumbling the entire time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Super intelligent move, by the way. Hey, yeah. next hour we're talking to Anthony Gonzalez. You know him? Yep, I uh, played football with Anthony Gonzalez. Hey, me too. <laughs> hey. I went to, uh, yeah, I've, I went to one of his little his one of his speeches when he was running for Congress. How did he do? Was it as good as Jameis? <laughs> yeah, Gonzo's awesome. You know him. He is such a uniquely intelligent, weird, like mature person. He was that way 18 years old when he walked onto campus at Ohio State. I agree completely. Couldn't describe him any better. So incredibly smart relatable still somehow because he had to be in a locker room and got along with a lot of people has had incredible experiences now he's got like i think four or five degrees at this point it's like oh he this guy was created to be the president of the united states of america Mm -hmm. okay good for him man hey my name's pat i punt balls around here (laughs) his uh his grandparents like escaped cuba like at the last minute from castro 
I can't came wait over. To talk. His dad started a great business too. His dad's very successful. I can't wait to talk to him, man. Cannot wait to travel. I got this name, image, likeness thing might be a necessity for NCAA to survive. I agree completely. I, I want to ask him like this. I feel like this takes all the pressure off of the schools and the NCAA because the players will be getting paid, but they're getting paid by you know sponsorship deals from outside businesses like car dealerships or autograph places that own memorabilia stores stuff like that now people are going to hate it right because they hate change and people are going to say well this is unfair for the ohio states of the world because there's a lot of boosters and a lot of money involved it's like ohio state's on national tv every fucking week is that fair for everybody else can we just can we just act like it, the the reality of this whole thing is that it's not fair like that the like, it's not fair. Hey, I, I don't know how to tell you. Alabama getting a 30 for 30, basically, yeah. and a, a follow along with Nick Saban where I get to see the human side of him on his boat and at his house in their facilities. And I don't see that at West Virginia. I don't see Neil Brown's house right over no, there in LA. I don't, I don't see it. It's just not fair. Hey, there's things that are different. Things aren't fair. Like, that's just how it goes. It isn't fair now. It won't be fair whenever money gets introduced. But I think it just is going to be a necessity at some point because there's going to be options for all these guys and girls. There's going to be options for leagues and for other things to make money. Content creation. I mean, trick shot people are making massive amounts of money. I, I just, it's going to have to adapt. And maybe Anthony Gonzalez is helping the NCAA more than they probably are even realizing it right now. Well, especially when you look at like the bonuses, even for these coaches when they get to like, you know, you know the college football playoff or the national championship it's like hey let's share the wealth a little bit here okay let's get some money around now now that money will not go to the players no, no. way no. and the school is always say you know we we don't make any money man yeah. is that man. right we don't make we're a non-profit really man. we don't make it look at the books look at the books man we're actually in the red oh yeah now i don't know if you did see here we just built this Seven hundred and sixty million dollar facility, right? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're actually uh, they're doing research right now, trying to find another uh, COVID vaccination. Mm -hmm. uh, how'd you build that? With what money? No, no. Well, well, the conference we're in. And, oh, uh, okay. The TV deal. Oh, you guys get money for that? The stadium tickets, oh. and then the uh, beers, and the food, and the merch sale, and the tuitions of everybody that's been hiked up 35% for no reason at all. Okay. So, yeah, and also, we're not making any money. But if you look right over here, I don't yeah. know if you got a chance to see us on your way in, fucking gold-plated statue of me. Wow. Of me. That looks awesome. Yeah, it cost us 20, 25 mil. No big deal. Had to add it late <laughs> into the year. Had to add uh -huh. it late into the year, right before April closed. You know what I mean? Had to add it in there because the books were, you know, we were potentially going to make money, but yeah, no, right. had to have the statue, though. It's a recruiting tool, and it's a symbol of everything we stand for. We make no money, though. We make no money, AJ. Who, who are you uh, in this story? Who are you? The person that uh, I like the part of it where they say they had to have a $25 million statue of themselves. Well... I, I haven't seen that exactly, <laughs> but I did see the West Virginia campus from my freshman year to my senior year to what it is now after we win four straight bowl games. Probably should have won a bigger game. I get it. But just of the success, national TV, the Big East growing from basically everything like that, the number of people that went to our school because we were on national TV every single week, plus we were a good time. I mean, I saw that campus completely completely flip around just one a full 180 on everything classes were getting better everything was getting better the stadium got built up the facility gets built up and everything like this and pat white steve slate Owen schmidt darius renaud and them are just sitting there like oh you're welcome <laughs> this is you're, nice. you're welcome okay. for all this i mean we don't even get a chance to experience a new locker room because it's in construction but hopefully the next class will very much enjoy, enjoy this it. i'm sure they'll win i'm sure they'll win but made no money made no money well if you if you go to any campus of any school that's doing well particularly in football, you're going to see a lot of cranes and a lot of construction sites. They're going to be doing, they're going to be building stuff at all times. You have to do it to keep up. Yeah. Well, not to keep up, but also to not make any money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You know, can't have surplus. That's how it works. No, you got to keep up to recruit. That's what they say. That's oh, right. we got to keep up for recruiting, but also on the back end, we very heavily say we make no money, so we can't make any money. No. So, oh, you want a new basketball? You got it. Hey, hey sure. Good. Hey, fucking yeah. get a soccer stadium right over there. Fucking build it for them. Right, right now. Hey, and then just, uh, you know what? The rifle team at West Virginia, they deserve their own guy. Mm -hmm. By the way, 
they legitimately do. The West Virginia rifle team might be the most uh, impressive group of, yeah. of of humans walking around that West Virginia campus. They just they're snipers with this thing. Let's build them their entire <laughs> fucking gun range. Yeah, awesome. That was like when I was at Iowa, I, you know, you work for like the the giving or the the College of Giving or whatever, and people would call in and you'd be asking about money for like the general scholarship fund, and they'd be like, "Yeah, fuck that, I'm not giving anything for that." And you'd be like, "Well, but the football team," they'd be like, "Okay, yeah, sounds good. What do you, how, what do you want me out to write a check out, check work, or do I get a gym? Yeah, <laughs> do I get my name on a wall? Maybe." A statue Can was that alabama like, that did like the whole facility it was like 60 something million dollars oh we were in michigan michigan had like a 400 yeah, million dollar more than that. also the same thing happened at michigan state they won the rose bowl cotton bowl made the playoff and now that campus is completely new yeah but they made no money and now they stink yeah. too <laughs> they made no money and i was thinking about uh the lsu graphic that got released from like their 2018 profits it was like the football team made 60 million dollars and then every other sport they had was in the and rest. that's just what they're reporting by the way and right. i believe though that they're there is a very, very important role in a lot of the sports that don't garner as much cash. I 100% I believe in that. That's why I'm not 100% sure that the schools will ever be able to play or pay the money generating sports players. Like, I don't know how they're ever going to be able to figure that out. There's going to be a natural thing. But the name image likeness thing, it's like I've always thought it's literally always I should be able to sign my name and make money if somebody wants to pay me to sign my name i should be able to make money like i understand you guys have helped me and made pe more people know me or whatever but i still own this and this goes this is let's take it out of your hands you don't have to pay us just let us do our own thing it's going to get obviously fraudulent somehow but i think it's a good step i i think it's it's going to happen i think there's enough momentum now where it should happen and you're right I think it takes it out of the NCAA's hands. They don't have to worry about it nearly as much when they don't have to come up with the money to figure out, hey, I got to pay the starting quarterback of the football team this, and I got to pay the same. I got to pay someone who is seventh string on the crew team the same amount. Yeah, that's it. Because then you got favoritism and yeah. blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, and you got to deal with all that. And those sports, I want to let you know, very cool, very important in this whole thing. Okay, I'm not against cool. those sports. But. Who is? Plenty, there are people, that, people. There are people yeah. that say like, well, they yeah. don't make any money. This is the this is the way the world is. They don't make money. You don't, like, hey, you want to do it? Just start making money. Then that's. I don't agree with that sentiment. I think that, you know, if you have a platform, you should be able to potentially help others out. The name, image, likeness thing, though, is just the quickest way to kind of cut that all out. So, yeah. do you think guys will be able to shine, sign shoe deals under this, or is that completely different? So fascinating. See, Foxy, sure. that is what's going to happen. It's going to just. Mm -hmm. Wait till Helka gets involved. Oh. Yeah, because universities have deals with those companies already, don't they? Yeah, yeah, you won't be able to. There'll be something in the. They'll they'll have some kind of deal where there's no way. Like you're you're a Nike team, you can't sign a deal with Under Armour. I no. doubt they let that happen. Yeah, they'll probably have like some. If it's a Fortune 500 company, you cannot have a deal with or some. They'll have some can't limit. Be, like, can't promote alcohol. Can't promote like weed companies, stuff like that. They have to have those kind of. So it's all jersey sales. And autographs and stuff Jerseys, like that. autographs, appearances, cool. merch. Could they use their socials? Socials. Yeah. It's a lot of money, potentially, yeah. for some yeah. people. Mm -hmm. Like that UCF kicker who had the YouTube, was that? Donald Lagan. Yeah. Destroy. Mm-hmm. He's a freak athlete. Yeah. He's very athletic. I can't wait to say hi to him. I, I sent a message to him before the announcement of SmackDown. I said, hey, are you ever in Tampa? And he was like, yeah, all the time. What's going on? And I was like, oh, yeah, I actually can't fucking tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet up. I want to talk to him. I can't wait to meet him in person. I'm a big fan of his. So let's get to a break. We'll be back on the other side to answer some phone calls. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Happy 420. We'll see you in four minutes. Pretty big breaking news. Oh, no. What's that? Oh, he's got that! Oh, he's got that! He's got that! Oh, shit! To a goddamn break. Can't happen. Oh, oh, no. No. Can't win with it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everything I just said was wrong. <laughs> it would have been cool though if it was. Yeah, it would have been cool. Oh, Dick just got a darn Schefter. Oh, oh my it was, god. It was at Ultra Weed Hater. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
got a cock in her. He got a cock. He got a cock in her. What was it doing on my timeline? Bro, my cock is just juju at me. We have no idea how to do the subway system, but Z is doing the direction, the directing, the mapping, the planning. Well, my tower is in 10 minutes. That train should be ready. How do you do a shit? He said it's went that way. This is Zito guided tour. We're not going to get spot on the train. Giving the old white guys something to complain about. It's the Pat McAfee Show. Hopefully you already got a 420 toy for your pup last week because we are back to spoiling the shit out of our dogs with BarkBox. Yeah, yeah. Two toys, two treats, and a chew. It starts as low as $22 a month for $60 worth of dog chews and toys. It's the best day of the month for our dogs when their bark box arrives. Uh, our dogs love them. Love oh, them. man. Oh, oh yeah. Tails won't stop wagging. They start, they start doing this thing. <laughs> even Chuck, who's a corgi, he's got a little nub. Yeah. His little nub will even bounce back and forth. Jeez. You know what I mean? It's like a little... He knows. He looks like somebody's in like a uh, a bag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Going back. Oh. That's what his, his tail looks like as a corgi. <laughs> this is actually his face on... Uh, when life is rough, take a puff shirt. Shout out Further Brand. You can buy this store at makeshow.com. When you buy it, all proceeds will go towards Further Brand, which is supplying money for families that are battling against canine cancer, which is what my dog Valerie, who has a full tail, is battling currently. One more procedure should be okay. Her tail, full tail. You got to watch out when the bark box arrives. You got to clear things off the tables because the tails are going to be flying in abundance for this thing. I'm whipping you. Uh, join now and get a free extra toy in every single box. That's $60 worth of free toys for this year sign up your pup and get unique toys and snacks plus a free extra toy every single month tailored toys and treats ship free every month start now and get $60 in free toys unique toys USA made treats free monthly delivery and $60 in free extra toys are you kidding me go to barkbox.com forward slash pat that's barkbox.com forward slash pat happy 420 welcome back to the show AJ we're up for zero sports Emmys <laughs> really they, so this list come out or whatever it is yeah it was announced sports Emmys man the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences is the academy behind this. We're up for zero of them. 
Unbelievable. Mm. Academy's what category? Shit. Like what categories would you be up for? We would be. Please have a little respect for we. I guess there is a daily show, daily sports show, show, host. show. Yeah. So who who are the finalists? Dan Patrick. Good morning, football. NFL Total Access, Sports Center, Pardon the Interruption, and MLB Tonight. It's a shame. MLB Tonight? Yeah, what the hell they is just, that? Good they, oh, literally good just, they literally just show <laughs> no, it's games. A show. It's a good show. It I've is. watched it before. It, it, it ain't that good. Well, it's a good show. I mean, they just show baseball games. Listen, we're all in the same business. Listen, the National Academy <laughs> of Television Arts and Sciences doesn't even know we exist out here. You know what I mean? Peacock's got a representative. MLB Network's got a representative. Mm. ESPN has a couple. NFL Network has two. I mean, you got to, you know, we're not friends with the Academy, boys. No. That's what no. we got to do. This year, this is what we do. We start our relationship with the Academy so we can get a Fugazi Award and feel better about ourselves. Yeah. That's the goal for next year, AJ. We need you to start shaking those goddamn hands whenever you're at those hoity-toity Illuminati <laughs> events that you go to. Hey, hey, I'll be on the lookout for all of the, the voters for whatever the board is that you named that does this. What other kind of categories do they have? Uh, studio personality, I yeah. believe, is the one like that I see. Emerging personality. Yeah, too. where's that? Where, are you, are you telling me you're, there's a personality one and you're not on the list? No, oh, AJ, you're Joe not on Buck's the list on it. Top guy in his attic doing a sports show. They don't recognize the biggest platform in the world, YouTube, as Because AJ platform. needs to win. Is AJ not up for the top guy in his attic award? Not this year, no. Yeah. Wow. wow. This is a Maybe joke. Maybe next year. Next year, top guy in his attic that joins for usually the last hour, the hour and 45 minutes of the show that goes from serious to YouTube that just meanders and uh, I have a great time with. I don't know if that's going to be a category anytime soon. It might be. They're making up all types of shit. Yeah. They're making up all types of awards for each other to feel good about each other. Um, maybe next year we'll be up for one. Yeah. I bet on it. Is this like... No, AJ, we need you. I don't go to these events that have these people at them. You mm -hmm. should be representing yeah. for us when you're at these events. That's really... Yeah, I'm really known for being a great networking guy. Like, yeah, just telling yeah. people what they want to hear. That's my thing. Yeah, well, I mean, you literally microdosed yourself shellfish so that when yeah. you go to these events you can eat shrimp cocktail like a like a normal person and not look like a noob amongst these illuminati folks hey, you're all right that's a real thing you did that uh, yeah you, you did it one time yep. you probably thought that's what happened he meets the national academy of television arts and sciences heads and he fucking grabs a big old shrimp cocktail with him hey how you doing cheers does yeah. that whole thing face swells up his jaw gets bigger almost dies they say we ain't never doing anything this guy's a part of so yeah, like, right. it's probably your fault if i had to guess I mean, if that happened, yeah, and I, that's usually what happens at those events. You grab a big old shrimp cocktail, you always you always take it out, cheers, you hit them real hard, and then you eat them. Yep. So, like, I usually have about 40 shrimp cocktails, so <laughs> I'm cheersing a lot of people. I thought so. I've never been. I assumed that was the case. Thank you for clearing that up for me. Don't you just live right up the road from, like, Epstein's best friend, oh, yeah. too, like yeah. that big yeah. benefactor? I figured you are hanging out with him yeah. weekly. I assumed that they have some say. Yeah. Wes Wexner, yeah, he is a... Uh, yeah, your buddy. Exactly. He lives yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. around Columbus. Not close to me, but he lives around nah, Columbus. Yeah, oh, yeah, pretty yeah, close. Yeah, I've yeah, never Diggs. met the guy. Unfortunately, I've never Same met the guy. Same area. Unfortunately, uh, by the, okay. What do you have, Dix? So this is big news worldwide. I don't know if we're, we want to do it a second day in a row. But Dan Roan, mm -hmm. who is the sports editor of BBC News, says that Chelsea are now preparing documents, documentation to request withdrawing from the European Yeah, Central. okay. And there was another old English club, I guess, that was thinking about getting out. I don't know if it's the same team or not. We got baptized in European soccer yeah. information yesterday by a man named Nigel Seeley, who Gumpy is friends with in the footy betting world. I absolutely love mm. Nigel. I feel like he laid out all the reasons why this Super League that sounded awesome as a very far off global fan, not fan, global forced watcher if it's in the conversation. And I saw these big names that I'd heard of and they're all gonna play each other. And I was like, this is cool. Then I saw there was like billions, and billions of dollars being dumped into it by JP Morgan Chase and the website looked awesome. I'm like, here we go, middle of the week. We're gonna have something that's awesome that we all know about. Then Nigel came on and basically talked about how the fabric of the sport would be ruined completely if this was to happen. The amount of teams that would end up falling off and not being able to exist and survive and get a chance to go up and the players in the Super League, which would be all the good players inevitably if this was to happen, can't play in the World Cup. So now the World Cup gets diminished because FIFA says it can't happen because they're potentially in bed with UEFA anyways. I had a complete about face on this thing. I thought it was awesome. Turns out teams are starting to back out. I wonder if they're going to be able to with the amount of money that was already promised to every single team.
These owners are absolute scumbags, Pat. <laughs> they put this out there, and not one of them will say a word. Their players, the coaches are out there answering these questions when they didn't even know this was happening. They just thought they could slide this through. No one would do anything. It's an absolute joke. You know, the, the thing about it is the European uh, Super League, they probably win some sports Emmys if I had to guess. Probably. Yeah. Oh, man, they know. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, Those people. Who, okay. So who are – everything I've seen, and I don't know – much of anything about soccer in the situation but it seems like everyone i see is really upset except for it seems like the people that put it together who are the owners right yeah, yeah the owners by the way i learned a lot of them oh. is anyone a fan are there any soccer fans out there that are fans of this i have not i was the only positive tweet about it and i was shit on by everybody and then i had to realize and learn why everybody was against it and then once you hear why it's like a very noble it's like a very you know it's called the the beautiful game or whatever and then you think about like the unwritten rules and then you think about how a team like man city in 1999 wasn't worth a fuck and then they go on this incredible run now they're in the champions league now they want to be in it's just i guess that's how the sport is it's always evolving always changing there's different teams at the top and the fact that they just label themselves as the heads i think is what pissed off everybody uh i was listening to nigel this morning he had another comparison today that hit home and it was it's basically like if the patriots steelers cowboys uh packers and niners made the playoffs every single year before the year started and didn't have to do anything just because they had dynasty runs and things like that. Can't do it. Mm -mm. I don't – I mean, that's not a terrible <laughs> idea. Let's get the Patriots back in the playoffs, so that's so, okay. I will say, the more and more American stooges that I had talked about about this and heard about, the more and more we said, like, yeah, this is what American football used to be like too. And then – business people got behind it and made it all about money and made it a business and by the way that is why you fans sometimes get upset about decisions they're like oh it's love of the game it's like no this is 100 percent of business over there in soccer it's still love of the game love of the sport love of the team love of the group that's a beautiful thing and it would take you know a few americans come in there and be like listen we used to be there too it's fucking wait till you see where we're going yeah wait till you see where we're going but right now it doesn't feel like anybody likes this gumpy's a diehard you don't love it at all huh? no i hate it chelsea plays today and their fans were out there before the game just screaming fuck the super league like <laughs> everyone is going and it's like if there was fans at these games like it would be absolute chaos oh and nigel said that because i went and saw paris saint germain and i'm not sure if uh they opted in they, they got offered and they said fuck no okay so psg a little bit of respect probably because i won't saw a game one time but <laughs> there was flares yeah. okay that got thrown onto the field there was a naked man on the drums yeah. behind me i mean Jeez. it was <laughs> insanity you know, I feel like these games, if there was fans, the reaction would be very similar but much larger to the Andrew Luck tweet thing that happened where the boos happen and things maybe. I, I feel like people would be throwing oh, shit yeah. on the field. The hooligans in the soccer world do not care. Oh, they no, they no, play by no. a different set of rules over there. Aren't they, hey, isn't everybody blaming Americans for this? Like America's bringing their kind of culture, how they're building super teams and want to do this? Yeah, I learned that yesterday in the middle of a conversation with Nigel. Yeah. <laughs> Tough shit. Literally. I mean, it makes sense. Sorry. We beat the hell out of you guys in a war. That's kind of how it works. <laughs> you know? I mean, I hate hell to yeah. say it, but... We hey, ain't paying taxes. Not, we're going to ruin soccer. Not board. all the owners were Americans, though. Like, Man City. Oh, Nigel was just painting that picture. Yeah, Man City's Just aren't. three of them. Whoa. Just three of them are American? So three, why we take Three of the, the six, I think, from the EPL. Well, let's assume they're a bunch of stooges, too. They don't even know. Still yeah. waiting to hear from LeBron James. He's new part owner of it Liverpool. It is his fault. Yeah. I mean, no. he hasn't I said, knew it. It's weird. He hasn't said a damn Michael thing. Michael wouldn't him. do this. If a, he would. <laughs> yeah. He would. I don't know. LeBron wouldn't want to do this. No, no. he wouldn't. Not uh, to the he, he heard about it. He shut that down. He would shut it down so quick. Sure. He's get, in the middle of a season rehabbing right now. Yeah, he's yeah. getting ready for the playoffs. Yeah, he doesn't even know. They'll, they'll, they'll brief him after the season. He'll say, I'm out. Can't do it. I'm out of the Super League. Mm. And, and Braun will probably actually fund whatever money was absent from the Super League. A yeah. main reason why this is happening, too, as well, is uh, the Champions League offered $7 billion and the super league no they to, to keep the champions league going and crash the super league oh, okay seven bill you come on back home we got yeah. a lot of money too <laughs> yeah. all right hour two wraps up we'll be back on the other side with a sitting congressman be a yeah. friend tell a friend happy 420 this is the pat mcafee show i think i've realized this year with the conversations you do seem to be a rather normal human which is very interesting right i assume for a lot of people to hear 
AJ said, no, you're not a normal human. But because all the stories about you before this year, to be honest, a lot of people, the way they believed is you were the smug king almost is what mm -hmm. the thing about it. And then getting a chance to chat with you, it's like, well, that's not the case at all. How is that like something you have to focus on? I assume it gets hard whenever you're hanging out with, you know, Scott Stapp is hanging Aaron Rodgers jerseys up in his goddamn office. That has to be pretty weird. Well, look, I think that's an interesting, interesting thing to, to talk about. I think a lot of times, uh, you know, people have said things about me, and it's been the same few people, and that's been kind of the prevailing story or thing that's reflected on. Um, I think for me, you know, I talked a lot about the work I did on myself. Uh, it was nice, and it wasn't intentional. Like, I didn't sign the show to have, like, and you guys know, we've talked about this off, off air, but there wasn't, like, some agenda doing this. It was, like fucking talk to Pat and AJ every week? Yeah. It sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it has been, by the way. It sounds amazing. But what it's allowed me to do is I think silence all the douchebags out there who were, you know, talking for me and making themselves more relevant by using my name or, you know, running with stories that were not really based in any type of fact. And look, I've grown as a person. Uh, you know, I've said things and done things that I wish I'd handle a little better, but this was a great natural, authentic, like whatever, whether it was 15 minutes at the stadium or 45 minutes to just like bullshit and have a conversation. You know, if you're a friend of mine, if you know me, I think this is about as normal as interaction you're going to see from me. It's not a lot of BS. You're not going to hear cliches and garbage. I'm going to you know, shoot from the hip mostly, tell you as much as I feel comfortable telling. I feel like I've been as honest as I could be. I've told you guys a lot of fun stuff. It's fun for me because then I don't have to like maybe rehash it on a Wednesday or people get to see a different side of you that maybe they didn't even know was there or didn't think was there. And it's been, it's been fun for me. I really have. I've appreciated every single week we've done these. And like I said, the best part is there was no agenda. There was no plan. I mean, even us, like we didn't know we were going to go like 10 minutes or 15 minutes or an hour. Or, like, we just started fucking talking, right? And then this, this came out and it's, it's been a lot of fun. You have got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question that pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was like watching you yeah. do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls oh, guy, man. fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I ever been a part of was, uh, you know, I, I, I had got the uh, uh, the restaurant, which I'm in right now. And, uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> <laughs> and I look, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> and I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and yeah. It's right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody then came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell a straight ass cheeks when they come in there like, I don't think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So, man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down and, you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple, uh, you know, uh, dolphins that, that usually walk back up in front. Of, hey, man, did you do this? Like, oh, no. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, yes, man, check it out. So, you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and, a, uh, you know, you help, you help us, we help you. You feel me? And you know, we put together a little, uh, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your and former you know, teammates. Man, yeah. Hey, player. everybody wants you helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them owned teammates. up to it. <laughs> Just a line of questioning. The line of questioning. His the name fact was that he owned Willie. Up. Willie, <laughs> Willie, Willie owned up to Matter of fact, he just, he just left out. He's saying, Sweeping up, he's like, hey, what's up? Oh, boy, I've been looking for you. You okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we bust down together up in the front of the uh, restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything.
Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy Willie, man. <laughs>
I'm good. These are the best intros ever. Thank you. I would assume. Now, we did talk about your job in the first hour, and it's nice to know you and AJ know each other in the same way you and I know each other. So we're all kind of in this thing the same together. We are talking about your job earlier whenever we first introduced that you were coming on the show, hour one. And we talked about how sports fans, very passionate. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Bill's Mafia, they're jumping off RVs through tables. There, There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of fan bases, you know, shirtless, naked, uh, potential things getting thrown on the field that are used behind closed doors and everything like that but <laughs> political fans over there whenever your fans make their way into my timeline the most passionate people of all time oh, and, and also it somehow is some way this person can be very passionate about this thing and there is a exact polar opposite view this way that is just as passionate always going to be a stalemate is that your life just figuring out how to avoid potential stalemates or is that just every single day in the world of politics i don't know much about it it's basically every single day in the world of politics. I mean, you, so I, I spend most of my time trying to find bipartisan stuff that we can work on and places for agreement and, and all that sort of thing. And you can do it. Um, but look, on the hot button issues, and you could name 10 of them, uh, folks are very passionate. They, they are where they are. And most folks aren't moving. Uh, and so that, that leads to a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the problems that you see and it's a lot of why we can't get as much done as we should well and that's the world too i think anytime you have 50 states being governed by one body and those 50 states have people inside of them that come from very different worlds it's insane to think that one potential place can legislate over everybody but i appreciate the fact that you decided to serve our country and try to make some magic happen let's talk about something that you're reintroducing i don't know if it's to the to the floor is that proper you're reintroducing it to the floor here. This name image likeness thing for the NCAA, this is a big deal, Gonzo. This is potentially going to save the NCAA and also help the players. This feels like this would be a bipartisan thing. Are you feeling that? And what are the next steps to really make this thing happen? Yeah, so it, it is bipartisan, our bill is. Uh, so basically, for those following it, um, so we're, we're in a bit of a chaos situation. So the state of California passed the name, image, and likeness bill. Florida and Mississippi's are coming online here in the next couple months in July. So we're going to be in a world where if you are a college athlete in Florida or Mississippi, you can market yourself, but nowhere else around the country. Um, and so, you know, that creates an, an unlevel playing field. And so what we want to do is we want to extend the right to all athletes across the country. I think it's a, a common sense economic right. Everyone else in every other profession that I'm aware of can do this except for the college athlete. Um, and so we'll, we'll extend the right. We'll put up some guardrails around recruiting, make sure that you're not literally paying guys to go to whatever school. Um, and, uh, and then you know, and empower the athletes and, and hopefully get college football or college sports in general. I think it'll apply to everybody um, back yeah. to a place that, that makes sense, because if we're in a world where every state has a different set of rules with respect to what you can do marketing wise, it's, wild, wild west. Um, it's chaos. So we're going to get out of that world. Gonzo, where like I'm confused where the pushback is coming from and why I feel like this name, image and likeness, it it takes the NCAA out of it. They, have, they don't have to worry about trying to pay every single athlete the same thing from the, the football players down to the crew team. Now it's just, yeah, we you can say it's unfair or whatever because some guys are going to get a bunch of money and some people won't, but I feel like the NCAA, they're bailed out by this. Yeah, so they've been very supportive of what we're doing. And, and frankly, you know, when we first started working on this a year and a half ago, there was a good chunk of people who didn't think we should go down this path. I think that we're, we're kind of past that. Where we are now is what all do we put in there? So some of my colleagues want to open up what I would argue is a can of worms and go actual employment, unionization, health care and full benefits, sort of like what you would have in the NFL via your union. Um, and, you know, I'll just tell you flat out, I've spoken to a handful of universities, many of which are great college programs that have said they would just stop sports. They're just not going to do that. They're not going to employ their student athletes. And the thing that I always say is, you know, if you go in the employment model, Maybe that sounds good, but it also means you're going to fire your student athletes. Uh, and so, um, you know, if somebody's not performing and that definitely doesn't make sense to me. And so what we're going to do is try to keep it on name, image and likeness, uh, maybe provide some additional disclosures on, on various items uh, and hopefully get it done that way. And our, our bill right now is the only bipartisan bill in Congress. Uh, and so hopefully that's the one that ultimately gets through. In the name, image, likeness or just on earth? <laughs> 
<laughs> Justin, name, image, and likeness. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. Hey, 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 good news. I thought there was potentially no. Listen, I don't know. I don't follow your world enough to really know. If you would have said there is zero bipartisan support bills right now aside from this one, I would have been like, yeah, it seems like, yeah, yeah sounds, yeah, about, sounds right. about right. Way to go. Way Ooh. to get the first one through. Um, we're talking to Anthony Gonzalez, congressman from Ohio. You said there'll be some disclosures to, you know, kind of slow down recruiting or whatever. We have talked about your bill here uh, a lot today, like three or four different conversations and a couple of things have popped up. So like shoe deals or anything like that, social media stuff. How, are you, how do you regulate that and make sure that players can still profit off the incredible work they've done on social media, but the shoe deals, that's a massive deal for the university as well that could become a little bit conflicting is it like no fortune 500 companies are allowed to get involved or how do you kind of ride those guardrails so we're trying to make sure that there's no conflicts uh, admittedly that that is a, a sticking point uh for for some of my colleagues so uh, you you hit on the right thing um, look at us all right. Right. Hey, 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 are yes. we congress you should run <laughs> All right, okay. You should run, Pat. No, 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 no. Uh, Very yeah. electable, from what I can tell, and I mean that sincerely. Oh, but yeah. Um, yeah, all right. You're but in any event, you're um, <laughs> I'm so uh, one of the things that that you brought up was social media, um, and it's interesting when we talk about name, image, and likeness. Most people think about you know college football or college basketball, and they tend to think men's sports. Uh, there was a study that was just released not long ago that showed if you just look at social media followings. I want to say it was seven of the top 10 in terms of who could capitalize on name, image, and likeness were women's basketball players um, because they have big social media followings and there's a lot you can do with that. And so I actually think it's, a, it's an idea that's going to benefit all the student athletes no matter what you do, uh, whether you're a you know, high profile athlete or you just want to teach some swim lessons uh, or whatever it is. Um, and so that's part of why I'm, I think it's it's the right move. But you did hit on uh, some good conflicts because it's it's tricky. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, we'll get to some other conflicts potentially happening in your world before we wrap up this name image likeness. So I did. I mean, I was great American history. I was pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, civic civics civics, yeah. civics was a class that I enjoyed. The teacher, he was awesome. I, Mr. Carpenter, I believe, is his name or or something like that. He was cool, but I don't remember a lot of it. I know there's three branches. I know there's a lot of shit going on. Uh, Supreme Court is the final hammer on a lot of stuff. But when it comes to what you're doing here, so you're reintroducing this bill. Will there be a vote on this now? Who votes on it? How do we get this thing passed? And what's a realistic timeline on this potentially happening? Because the NCAA might need this a lot sooner than later with how there's a pop-up of money-making things happening for high schoolers now at this yeah. point mm -hmm. and also college athletes. Yeah, so our, our goal is to get it done by the end of the year. I think you're right. The longer we let it play out, the worse it gets. Um, in terms of will it see a vote, now here's something they probably didn't teach you in civics class, but it's absolutely true. Uh, unless the Speaker of the House puts a bill on the floor or wants a bill on the floor, it will not get there. Um, so we, we have to do our part to work with our colleagues on the other side of the aisle um, to make sure that this is ultimately the one of the three or four that are being debated. Uh, that makes it to the House floor for a vote. Um, that's a, you know, you can imagine a, a bit of a frustrating process at times, but uh, but since we're the only bipartisan game in town, uh, I hope that uh, that we can get there. Is this what you got to do? You just got to do a lot of this, huh? A lot of this, a lot of a lot PowerPoints. Of so many of... handshakes. You got I mean, we're that. not doing that. We're like doing bumps. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I forgot. Oh, with, uh, I forgot. Yeah. Smart, by the yeah. way. I need you guys over there to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Are you doing decks and PowerPoints and everything like that? We're not really a decks and powerpoints kind of a kind of an operation of course or a, it's uh, the government it, that, that would give us too much credit we'd be smarter but we don't do that stuff okay can we move along to other things as well i hope the name image likeness thing goes on you'll be saving a lot of lives you're the only human i really talk to ever in my orbit that would know answers to a lot of questions i have perfect we can talk about whatever you want it's 420 when are we getting dope legal <laughs> 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 when are we getting out of Come on. because because there's a lot of states that have it recreational now oh, yeah. it started out as a medicinal thing it seemed like it was maybe going to be a slow rollout i think some places got faster uncle covid came through but you shut down yeah. shut down a lot of places economically is this something that we we're maybe going to see the light of day here during my lifetime are we going to get a federal dope potentially in your eyes obviously i i don't want to you can't predict everything but does it feel like that's something that's maybe going to happen on this beautiful monumental holiday of 420 
you know, it's funny. I had no idea what that was 420 until you said that. Yeah. Um, oh, jeez. Uh, Gonzo, he's so dialed in. Yeah. 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 So dialed in. Happy 420, Gonzo. Yeah. Yeah. Gonzo. As you know, it's not my thing. But, it is not. Uh, but yeah. having, having said that, um, so, look, we actually just voted on something. I think it was last week. I voted in support that would allow for states that have legalized, that have gone down that path, um, allow those businesses that are licensed to enter the financial system. So today, as you may or may oh. not know, um, it's all it's an all cash business. They can't open a checking account. They, th these businesses that are licensed in states, they can't open a checking account. They can't go through the traditional financial sector. It's really dangerous for the operators uh, because you're walking around with all this cash uh, and it's and it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what we did was we voted to legalize the idea that if you are a licensed operator in a particular state and you're following the laws of that state, you can now enter the banking sector. It's actually a big step. That's uh, huge, so that's, huge, yeah. right? Because that was that's federal. Yeah. Is because the I remember when uh, Colorado opened up. The story was, oh, they made this massive amount of money. There was people traveling to Denver and Colorado from out of state. But when you got there, there was these people that had maybe ARs standing at the door or whatever because it was an all cash operation because they were scared to put the money into the bank because the feds run the bank and they could freeze the account. And this is potentially something that maybe is an obstacle or a hoop that people no longer have to worry about if they were to legalize it that i feel like this is a massive step for you guys even if even if the federal government doesn't legalize it or deschedule it um it would allow them to enter the financial system so it's basically a carve out uh, in the law that says no matter what happens at the federal level if at the state level it's legal uh, you can now transact uh, using the banking system so it is actually a big deal now that passed the House. It hasn't passed the Senate yet, no, um, but I think it, it probably, uh, I think it probably will within the next two years, and I could see that getting signed into law. Two years, Gonzo? What are we doing? God. <laughs> Is that a lot or a little? <laughs> Forever, a long time. Yeah. I might be on six different careers in two years. So, so you, you're the House. Is that what you are? We're in the House, yes, sir. You send it over to the Senate, and they have less or more people over there. They have fewer. Uh, yeah, they're smaller. 100 people there, 435 where we're at. Okay, so when it gets through the 435 and gets through the hundo over there, they just have a stack of shit they got to uh, vote on. They can't just put this one through and be like, this makes sense. This makes our country smarter. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. 100 voices. Yeah, let's go ahead and move on. That's not how it works at all, huh? It does on some issues. Like if you want to name a post office, you can probably do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but if you... If you uh, if you want to do something like this, you're going to have hearings and, and they're going to have to go through their own process. We've gone through our process. They're going to go through their process. Hey, well, it thank you. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, Two, three years. Geez. Hey, Gonzo, I know the next natural question coming from somebody here on the show is about the whole alien situation we have going on. Pat loves to ask me about it. We know we see all these videos out. How many people from your life that you maybe grew up with or friends or family text you and ask you if you have the inside track on these aliens and if you're the, you're the one that's that's met a few of these guys yeah and when can we go to area 51 so you met real aliens um i thought you were talking yes. about immigration uh, yes <laughs> <Gosh>. um, <laughs> no 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 go on so we don't give a fuck about that now we're gonna, <laughs> listen what we care about by the way Come on in. Yeah. The water's, water's fine. Just, Let's yeah. make this place awesome. But do what you got to do. But we're talking about the Pentagon. Do you do you, do you, do you stop by over there every single day? Do you just go stop by the Pentagon and say hello? You know they don't they don't actually let you in like that. So I when you when you get sworn in, you sign this thing that basically says you know you can see classified information now, and you're not going to disclose it. So of course my first question was. Where are the aliens? Yep. And what happened to JFK? Yeah. So okay. You know, we got to figure this out. These are things that are on people's minds. Um, totally denied. Apparently, that piece of paper I signed meant nothing. They, oh, they, they, will, not, they will not tell me anything about the aliens or or JFK. So I'm just going to have to, you know, like you, just see what happens. How long you been around over there? How many years you been over there? It's my third year. Oh, at what point you think they let you into like the uh, the Alien Information Act? I don't know. I think you got to become president. But, you know, if you remember, like, well, so COVID, I, COVID, you know, hey, Gonzo, need you, get it need you, need you to <laughs> so, do that. OK, need you. So the, the Pentagon confirms 
UFOs during COVID, and it was like, oh, that's interesting. Like nobody cared because we, we were did. losing our minds over everything else. We we <laughs> lost. I mean, speaking of COVID um, yeah. and everything that has happened, your world has been insane. I assume this is going to go down as now. I didn't live during the Great Depression or uh, obviously either of the World Wars, and I have nothing but respect for the people that had to battle through that. But the entire world stopped. Everything was relying upon protocols and science, allegedly from this doctor and. On on the complete opposite side, another doctor disagrees completely with what this doctor said. Over there, with that whole dealing of that thing, you could have never guessed that was what you were signing up for. And how did you go through day to day? It had to be fucking miserable over there. You know, so obviously it, it was tragic for the country and for the entire world. Um, and so, you know, what, what we always said with COVID, because things were happening so quickly and the information was changing every day, what I told my staff is, you got to understand, we're living, we need to be able to see three or four days into the future, just long enough so we can prepare our constituents, because it was jarring for people, uh, and and uh, not, not just economically, but everything. You know, everything that you know and love gets shut down overnight, essentially. And so we just focused on trying to provide help for our district and making sure that you know the financial supports were there, that we got the health system up and running. Um, it was very, very intense. They were long nights, but um, you know, ultimately, I don't think any of us thought we'd be here a year plus later still dealing with this. I know I didn't. I thought this would be about a six month deal. Um, but uh, you know, the good news is there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and I think folks, at least in my district, folks are completely ready to get back and get back to living life. So. Yeah, I, I think everybody is at this point. Now, not everybody, obviously, there's still people that not are on the other. Not everybody, yeah, obviously, there's some people still that are, you know, Optim cautiously pessimistic about everything, which, by the way, have to have those people on Earth as well, completely understand. And uh, the world shuts down never before seen. And coming back out of that, obviously, is going to be something where there's no blueprint on how you do this entire thing. There's been some testy times, though. I, I mean, even as somebody that is a sports stooge, there has been some real testy times through this entire thing. I was, hey, we were legitimately worried about you whenever it seemed like there oh, yeah. was potential yeah. shit popping off over there. Happy to hear you're okay, Pal. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's uh, if you're referring to the, the January 6th. Uh, yeah, th those were scary nights. I mean, I was I was locked in this office for six hours uh, with the lights off. And, you know, they basically said they were ringing alarms. And if you were on the House floor, they were trying to evacuate you. I had happened to be walking back to my office, barricade the door, turn off all your lights, don't make any noise and, you know, just wait for the chaos to end. Uh, and so Did you put one of those you know, helmets we, on behind you. Did you put one of those helmets on, put the old Ohio State <laughs> helmet on. Might have to earn another Buckeye today. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did. I actually, I, so I changed out of this suit. Uh, I put on some jeans and some running shoes. And I thought, well, if they come in, you know, I got two doors. I said, if they come in, hopefully they'll think I'm, you know, here with them or something. And if not, I'll just sprint like crazy down the hallway. <laughs> I'm still fast enough, so hopefully they can't catch me. I've only been somebody. here three years. They don't know I exist. Let me, let me put on <laughs> some jeans so we get out of here. Yeah. But who, no, I, who, was I who was with you? I a statement you? prior telling folks what I was going to do. So I knew that the folks who were storming the Capitol, they weren't going to be particularly happy with me. So, um, yeah, so I, uh, true. you know, you, you do whatever you got to do to stay safe. But, you know, in all honesty, I mean, not to go into a into a uh, darker place, but look, it, it's reflective of a lot of what's broken in the country. It's reflective of a lot of the anger and the vitriol. And, and frankly, I think a, a factor has been the lockdown and people been locked inside on their computers, playing around on social media, which is a cesspool in many instances. Um, and so, you know, we, we've got to we've got to build back out of that. We can't let that happen again. I mean, that was a, a national embarrassment. Uh, and we were very close to losing a lot of lives. There was a uh, Viking that was the Speaker of the House for oh, yeah. 15, 20 minutes. I don't know if you saw it. He didn't say anything, but <laughs> I just saw a photo or two. Uh, I'm happy you're okay. We're all very pumped up about that. AJ, sorry, bud. Well, six hours gone to that. Was anyone else in there with you? And I guess when you, if you're barricaded with the lights off, like, are you checking your phone to see what's going on? And can you could you hear people? Like, were they right outside your door? Yeah, so um, I was checking on Twitter to see what was happening. And that's... One of the reasons I left the House floor, so I was there. I was so upset with what was going on that I left as the objections were happening. And um, I was seeing on my phone, and I thought, man, these folks are about to breach. I mean, you could just you could just tell based on what was happening. And I looked out one of the windows, and, and you could see it. 
Um, so you guys didn't, well. so there was no, like going into that day, there was no like, hey, there's a chance that the Capitol is going to get stormed. You don't think there was any, any pre-briefing of that or was there? A little, nobody thought that, but I mean, I'll tell you, I knew something was wrong when they said, hey, get in early because, you know, we don't know what kind of demonstrations there's going to be. And I thought, okay, so early to me means like 5 a.m. So I wake up at 4.30, I start driving in and the roads are packed with buses of people coming in for the event. And I mean packed, uh, more so than they are in normal traffic hours. And there were already people all over the, the Capitol Mall. And I thought to myself, okay, this this isn't normal. I mean, I've been in D.C. for some protests, and I've been in D.C. for some, some hairy situations, but this is totally different from anything I've seen. Uh, and then at, on top of that, uh, one of the members of Congress was walking across the street from their office to the House floor ahead of the vote, and some guy handed him a flyer that basically said, you know, armed militias are meeting in this particular area. Um, you know, bring your weapons. We're going to be storming the Capitol. Jeez. That's definitely not normal. Um, and so you, you start seeing all these signs. And, you know, the, the reality is what people believed, which wasn't true um, about the election. You know, you can't, my view, in a democracy, you can't tell people that an election has been stolen and is completely illegitimate and expect people to just go about their day as if there's no problem. Hey, that's exactly what we started this with. Like, you know, the, the, the politics world, and I don't, I stay out of it. I'm very thankful you get into it because, you know, you can kind of learn us up on this entire thing whenever it happens. But the fans of politics are very, very passionate. And it's like, it seemed like, this is just from an outsider's perspective, watching on the internet like you did. The moment that that thing happened and was called upon, I was like, it feels like there's going to be some shit that's going to pop yeah. off here. Like, it, it just felt like it, you know what I mean? From the internet, just judging the internet. But obviously, I don't think any of us expected the Viking to take over the Speaker's no. house for a little bit. No. There's no way we No, thought. yeah, you're right. And I, you know, like I said, it's... It, um... I was trying to fight it the whole way up to January 6th because we I sort of did see it. I didn't see that coming, but but you, you just know there's going to be unrest. And so we were trying to push back on a lot of the lies about the election um, and try to at least tell people the truth. Uh, but um, we could not break through. Uh, and, and that was frustrating because to your point, you know, you, you just saw it building and you could feel it building. And then that day, especially. Um, Gonzo, how do you guys deal with how do you deal with the misinformation of the world right now? Like you guys have to be so focused on your world, right? You have to be so focused on doing your job that I guess you can't automatically have a pulse of every single potential narrative that is going out about everything. But is that something that you guys are potentially trying to address? Because you called uh, social media accessible. I would assume in your particular world that your social media is accessible, by the way. Because every once in a while, your cesspool will make it into my happy. I enjoy my social media. Sports social media, I have a good time. But the politics one will make its way. It'll kind of snake its way into my social media. Every once in a while, I'm like, geez, that sounds terrible. That's your life in this whole thing but is there any way to potentially try to stop that or how do you regulate that is there is there concepts ideas meetings like hey we need to be more transparent with people we need to maybe have more press briefings but even then people think it's bullshit like how do you you're only three years into this thing i feel like this has probably been happening for centuries now at this point but it's it's big with the spread of social media now you know yeah it's actually i think it's worse now than it's ever been so what i i my personal belief is one of the biggest or the biggest problem we have in the country is a complete collapse of truth. So if you ask people on the street a, a question, a political question about what's happening in XYZ issue, they're gonna tell you completely different realities. Uh, and it's because we're in completely different social media silos, our media environment is polarized. There's no real incentive to tell the truth. Um, it's, it's much easier and frankly, as a politician, you can raise a lot more money if you're just making people angry all day. Um, so I, I choose to do it a different way. How do you fix it? You know, I, I, I'm pessimistic that there's legislation. Here's what I'll say, though. I actually think it's incumbent upon every single person in the country to take responsibility for this on their own. If we all agree it's a problem, don't let it be a problem for you. So, hmm. you know, for me, hmm. I... I'm not really on social media. We have official accounts, but I, one of our rules with our office is we're just going to tell people the truth. They might not like the truth, um, but we're just going to tell people the truth. Ah, uh, Gonzo, uh, we had an entire thing earlier about people that have teams that run their Twitter. I mean, you're a, you're a. I think he's okay to have a. He's team. a congressman. Yeah. He's a congress. Yeah. Yeah. He's a representative. Yeah, politics right. aside. Yeah. Politics aside. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, sorry. I had to clear that up for people that are watching our show. But I do like your call for everybody to kind of buy in and find out what the actual truth is. Because, man, nowadays, with how quick things can go, I mean, it never... I don't know how you guys will combat it, Gonzo. And I'll, I'll say that there's some trusted, like, news publications. So I personally... The like Emmys? The local papers. The local papers oh. are pretty good. They're not going to mislead you too much. Because they're, you know, most of the time... you. You live down the street from one of them. Uh, and then I think the Wall Street Journal does a good job. But beyond that, it's really hard to find stuff that uh, that's factual. The boys have some questions for you. I assume you have a lot sure. going on. Are you cool for a couple more minutes? Until somebody opens the door over there and hauls me out of here, I'm, I'm good with you. Well, uh, let's hope that yeah. <laughs> nobody opens that door. No, no, yeah. no. Not like that. My staff. Oh, oh, okay, got okay, got it. Okay, got we it. We got meetings. Yeah, so, got it. Got the whole no, thing. Good. We got another probably five, ten minutes, whatever you want. I forget what I was going to ask, Connor. What do you have? Yeah, Congressman Gonzalez, there's been a lot of talk about full stadiums uh, in the NFL, and obviously uh, the Texas Rangers already did it. Uh, in your circle, is that something that is a conversation, or is it just like, hey, this is happening, we're just going to have to let it go? Yeah, I personally don't think we should be getting too involved in that. I, I, I would like for the leagues and the cities and you know the people closest to the decisions uh, to make those choices as to what's best for their communities. Personally, you know, like I've been vaccinated. I know a lot of people. I think it's about half of the adults in the country have. Um, I'd love nothing more than to go to a. a hey, so I'm not going to die. <laughs> what's hey, that? if I get a vaccine, I'm not going to die. The people you're, the, you, the people you've talked to, say no. I didn't die. I mean, no. Well, I look in all honesty. Years. Just like <laughs> yeah. the, uh, in all in all seriousness, the, the vaccines are incredibly safe. I mean, there haven't okay. been really there have been no deaths from a vaccine. Um, now you you probably get some side effects, uh, but you know, like my arm hurt for a couple of days, but that was about it. Some people, you know, you might feel ill for a day or two, but you know, if if the alternative is COVID, um, I'll take the vaccine and deal with a side effect uh, over getting COVID and potentially going into the hospital or whatever it is. Well, and also not being able to go to a game. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Because uh, I like to watch the boys play yeah. out there. Ty, what do you have? Gonzo, you alluded to it earlier, and I think you've talked about it on this show before, but what the hell's going on? When are you going to run for president? Mm -hmm. Is that something you would even want to do? Because, I mean, based on the conversations we've had with you in the past, I mean, you're the perfect candidate. Yep. <laughs> I'm good for the, the this demographic, I guess. No, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't want to do that. Um, you know, if, I don't think it would be very good for my family. And that's the thing I say about about this job. Look, it's the honor of a life. Like I get to wake up every morning thinking about how to make the country better. And it's it's an incredible opportunity. And I take it seriously. Um, it is very difficult on families, especially young families. So we have two young kids. Um, you know, it's just it's just tough. It's tough being in the public eye. But um, but it's. Uh, it's also difficult from a travel standpoint. So I don't know that I'd want to be president, um, to be honest, but uh, I, I, I appreciate the sentiment. Do maybe if the folks on the Facebook page or whatever, YouTube or whatever we're on, uh, call for it, maybe we'll do it. What are you, a 95-year-old man? <laughs> <laughs> figure out, just figure it out, all right? We, we actually said this, uh, AJ said this earlier, that when you walked on the campus at Ohio State as an 18-year-old, you were somehow the most mature, most intelligent, most incredibly weird person he's ever met in his entire life. You have this, you have these traits that like after meeting you and hanging around you, and then now you get, once you decide to get into politics, everybody that's probably ever been around you has been like, oh, he's the per he's the perfect guy for that. You legitimately are. The fact that you have no idea what's going on in our world even amplifies that yeah. even more, mm -hmm. I think. So I do appreciate your uh, your work and your, your effort for everything. And I hope you, you know, maybe change some things over there to make the world a better place. We appreciate the hell out of you, Gonzo. Thanks, brother. We, we'll keep we'll keep working on it. Uh, you all enjoy the show and, and keep telling the truth and we'll, we'll figure it out. It's a great country. We'll figure it out. We're just going through some weird stuff right now. Okay. Before we let you go, do you know anybody at the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences? <laughs> National Academy? I'm sure I do. What are we trying to get done here? We just want to be nominated for one. We, we, we <laughs> want to nominate. Sports Emmys announced the nominations today and there's probably four to five different categories we could have got nominated for. We're nominated for not Zito, what do you have? I was going to ask for a bill passing, but after this. Oh, okay, okay. We got a bill that we would like passing. We would also like yeah. an introduction into the sports Emmys people, if you could. Just kind of put it into your schedule or whatever. What do you have, Zito? Uh, can we pass a bill in Ohio for no more two-foot drivers? Ooh. No more, no more two-foot drivers, as in, like, 
a, a, like the club, the drive, like a golf thing? Or no, what no, no. About? What we're talking about is when you're driving your car around Ohio. We learned very recently that Ohio is the most dangerous state in the union to drive in because a lot of the drivers are using their right foot for the gas and the left foot for the brake. Yeah, and it's just a normal dangerous. thing. Can we, can we rule that out or can you put some legislation in for that to be banned? That sounds like a state level issue, but uh, very dangerous if you're trying to drive your car like a go-kart. <laughs> yeah, is that right? Is, is that right? You're, like stooges only, right? Gonzo, you'd say just absolute, see, well, you can't say that because they might have to vote for you. I'll say it. Gonzo just said that only stooges drive like yes. that. Yep. AJ, a constituent of Ohio, do you have anything to say in return to Congressman Anthony Gonzalez? Hey, I respect I respect Gonzo's opinion on that. I understand he's much smarter than me, much more intelligent, but I'm going to continue with my two-foot driving. Okay, uh, yeah, he's <laughs> The face, yeah, Gonzo, that he, guy. He, he's the face of it over you there. You set me up there. You didn't tell me that AJ was the one doing this. <laughs> None of us would have guessed that AJ would be that done. None of us would have guessed, Gonzo. It's not your fault. Uh, another state thing that maybe you can help. Can we get Ohio into uh, FanDuel uh, mobile sports gambling? Can we? Can we? Who do we have to talk yeah, to about no, that? There's, uh, so they're they're working on it. There's a there's politics. There's a debate as to who should govern it. Whether it should be the lottery commission. Uh, or um, the gaming commission. I won't weigh into that, but as soon as they figure that out, uh, we'll have it. So that conversation is happening, though, you're saying? Yeah, Ohio's going to get it done. It's just a matter of when. Okay! Let's go! Good news! I don't know if you ever get to deliver that in the world you live in, and we can't thank you enough, ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Gonzalez. Thank you, Gonzalez! See y'all. Thank you. See you, man. Uh... Really cool that we just get to fire away <laughs> at a congressman just because we happen to be friends with one. You know, uh, that's a pretty cool little thing. Imagine, imagine the meeting he's about. He's getting whisked away to right now, and he's like, "Hey, hey, Tim, what have you been doing? Hey, Gonzo, what, what are you up to?" He's like, "Um, I, just, I don't know. I don't know. I'll send uh, you a clip." There's a bill about two footed driving. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's on a Facebook show. Hey, how about the dope? The dope vote. Yeah, yeah that's, that's big. A, like, that's a big deal because use your debit card. <laughs> yeah, you can use your card when you're buying, which is huge. But also, they don't have to have just armed uh, yeah. security basically all around the buildings. It's insane. Go ahead, Dump. It was wild in Denver when I went down there. There was a guy like you said, right at the fucking door, just ready to go. Hey, is everything okay? Is weed in here? I think yeah. weed's pretty happy thing. He's like, yeah, it is until somebody comes to fucking. <laughs> Just go get your little sativa, pal, all right? And get the hell out of here. <laughs> they got the vests. They got oh, everything yeah, when yeah. they're standing out they're there. All cash business. Yeah. And they were like, well, we can't put it into banks because the banks are run by the feds and the feds don't legalize it. So they could freeze our money at any time and we'd be fucked. So we just got to hold it. And it's nice to hear that the feds, though, go like, hey, these people shouldn't have to feel like they're in a war zone in every no. single city. Let's go ahead and give them a variance. Let's go ahead and pass that thing. Hopefully that'll help everybody else legalize it for the rest of the country let's go ahead and get to a break i feel like we covered real things yeah. there. Oh, oh yeah awesome i mean yeah. if that doesn't win us an emmy next year i don't know what will yeah. well, good luck you've talked the, the best is, the best is he didn't really he thought this may be on facebook first yeah shows you like yeah that's that's where he's at like he's so dialed into his world and then when i when i brought up the ufos and the aliens he's oh those that, those kind of aliens okay so <laughs> the by the show. way, yeah, because think of the conversations he's got to be yeah. in. Yeah. Oh. Somebody comes in, these aliens. <laughs> Hanzo's like, are we? Wait. Which ones are we? Hold on. <laughs> We're not talking Elon Musk. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. You even dropped the Gizline. Gizline. <laughs> yeah, that was my have, favorite. You might have to answer questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one of those. You think he picked up on that? You think oh, he picked yeah. up on the I Gizline? Think, uh, I heard a little. Ooh. <laughs> that whole... You know, we have an issue with the truth thing is tough because, man, I'm learning about stuff in there that makes its way to my timeline that could just be complete bullshit. But by the way, we got to live in that world, too, in sports. So mm -hmm. it's not just your world, Gonzo. It seems to be everywhere these days. Maybe we will all buy in and say, we ain't with the shits no more. Yeah, yeah. We ain't with the shits. Mm -mm. <laughs> all right, we got a four-minute break. We'll answer some phone calls on the other side. Big politics show. Yeah. Huge. 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 We just had a future president on. No big deal. Yeah. This is Pat McAfee show. We'll see you in four minutes. Hello and welcome to Office Championship Wrestling live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Tonight, we have a straight-to-hell match in which the devil will battle against our office wrestler, Dylan Boston. You might be wondering how we got here. Let's find out right now. 
And now we have to make a deal with the devil. Yeah, no big deal. Classic trial by combat situation. We got our champion, Dylan Bostic. All he's got to do, win the match, one, two, three, and we're home safe. The only man that would take the job to protect us from the devil himself, Dylan Bostic. Like you mentioned, Pat, there's probably about five or six other guys we'd rather have in this position, but we'll take Bostic, I guess. Not only are all of our souls on the line, the Office Championship Wrestling Championship, presented by Natural Light, is also on the line. No, Jesus, the devil's no, trying to put I Bostic right to, to hell. hell! I do not want to Good go God, to hell! No. Don't do Good it! Good God, no! Come I on, can't. Bostic, man! Oh, no. in hell, Pat. The goddamn Easter Bunny's out here! What the hell's he doing here? The Easter Bunny is obviously here to help Dylan Bostic. Wait a minute. No! No, no! The Easter Bunny's been on the devil's side this whole time! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus what the hell's Christ. Jesus Christ doing here? The power of Christ is compelling Dylan Bostic! Look at this, Pat! Jesus Christ is bringing Bostic back to life! Jesus is going insane! And now Bostic's kicking wholesale ass in the ring! Jesus Christ has come to help Dylan Bostic defeat the devil and defeat the Easter Bunny! What's gonna happen here? Good God Almighty, it looks like he's going up in the scissor lift! Jesus is lifting the scissor lift! Jesus is now telling Bostic to come down from Don't do it, heaven. Bostic! Don't no. do it! Oh, oh my God! God. Oh. Bostic's dead! He's dead! You can't tell from home, but that scissor lift is about eight stories up, Pat! Eighty feet in the air! Oh, wait! He's tuning up the band! The devil! Super Jesus. kick! Oh. Into the casket! Into the, the devil casket. goes down! Jesus. The devil goes down! He shuts the casket! Hell. The devil goes straight back to hell where he belongs with the assist from Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Dylan Bostic saves the PMI office's souls and wins the OCW championship right here on our first OCW straight to hell. McAfee at the top of the key. Five seconds, four seconds. Step back three for the win. Criminal defense, typical for the story of events that you're hearing these days. So sad, so stiff. My mama always told me there'll be days like this. So, give us a call at 888 Mad Dog 6. Pat wants to hear from you. No, not really. He just ran out of things to talk about. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Buckle up, it's magic time. Yes, yeah. Inspired by the crazy, crazy illusionist of Big Trick Energy, premiering on True TV at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Thursday, I'm going to use my powers to gaze into the future and provide a completely accurate prediction for the NFL Draft. Wow. Hell yeah. So 100% come true, AJ. You ready? True. Yeah, true. just like the coin toss. Let's do it. This oh. guy. AJ, you stink. Some guy. nerve on that. Go get stink. lost at Augusta, AJ. Thank you, fucking nerve. I already did Listen, that, Gump. I had a great time, Gump. We're talking about Big Trick Energy right now. This is not. This is a new me. I'm now hooked up with Big Trick Energy. Debut and premiere at 10:30 p.m. Thursday, What's Eastern cool? Standard Time, True TV. This is a new me. If I would have known them before, guess what I would have done? I would have said heads. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so what I would have said. That's what they would have told me because they look in the future. Ready? I see something, the vision is getting clearer. It says no matter who they draft, the Jets are still gonna stink. Oh! Big trick energy from the top rope! 
Dude, wow. that's true. Okay, there's a prediction. Big Trick Energy is a brand new show on True TV that features incredible illusionists using their skills to prank unsuspecting spectators. Parenthesis. And totally screw with each other. Oh, oh, come on. You've probably seen these magicians before either on TV or their hugely popular YouTube channels, but you've never seen anything like Big Trick Energy energy the crew bends reality to pull off some truly insane stunts that leave people in awe and their fellow magicians shocked literally shocked in the trailer there's a bit where they're wearing shock collars okay hold on mm. <laughs> in the uh in the trailer there's a bit where they're wearing shock collars and zapping each other while they're trying to perform tricks the guys from big trick energy will be right here on this show tomorrow 3 p.m eastern standard time exclusively at youtube.com forward slash the pat mcafee show and of course don't miss the premiere episode big trick energy tomorrow april 22nd 10 30 eastern standard time on true tv can't, can't wait. wait big trick energy aj get you some dude was all of that in the read everything you said yeah i mean i did a little extra but boy yeah it was pretty uh okay. it's pretty good so, the show sounds like a mixture of impractical yeah. jokers with magic yeah there used to be something he was a uh, carbonara effect. yeah the italian uh, guy yeah carbonara oh, effect. Gross. i saw him did live you watch here that show what do you mean did i watch that show that was brutal what Jeez. Hey, come on say it was a bad show he's a he, i'm sure he's a great magician but how it was set up and what the show was Someone tried to force me to watch it in a situation I couldn't get out of, and I almost jumped off the roof. <laughs> were you, what, you were locked in a house? <laughs> Gun to your head? Yeah, I can't exactly give a bunch of specifics, but my wife was there as well, and we looked at each other like three minutes in and realized we're in for the long haul. This is <laughs> Fake la we had to fake laugh and uh, fake like we were uh, shot. Uh, yeah. Was it with Carpenaro? Yeah. <laughs> this is what we're talking about. When you're at these events, instead of being forced to watch these things mm -hmm. with the people that created the show, go shake some fucking hands. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be up for one of these Emmys. Golly. Let's go to John Donner in Indiana. What's going on, John? It's funny he mentions that because I saw him live. And he hey, did what's think. going on? I watched the show. It was a great show. Me too. I love the show. I love the went, show too. Went and saw Pat, him live you know in nobody Indianapolis. You, I fell asleep like 25 minutes into it. It fucking <laughs> no. stunk. It's hard to fall asleep. I wanted my money back. Yeah. Hard to fall asleep during a live <laughs> oh, show. Oh, I know. Tight seats. <laughs> yeah. Tight seats. People on top. It was at the. Uh, it was at the Marat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's where I saw him. Practical jokers. <laughs> 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 I did not. I did not fall asleep during oh, that. I wanted Jesus, to stay it awake. It was brutal. Let's go to John. John in Indiana. What's going on? Nobody believes you, Pat. What's going on, Pat, AJ, the boys? What's up? Just hanging out, John. What do you want to talk about, dude? Well, you guys have been learning about the relegation over there in the Premier League recently. Mm -hmm. And it kind of jogged my memory of the idea I used to have about how to shake the NFL up every, you know, five, ten years or so. And that's to kind of shift the divisions around a little bit. Okay. Instead of the Patriots beating the crap out of the Bills and the Jets and the Dolphins. For Whoa, dude, years. we beat them once a year. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. ass Dolphins. <laughs> Every single year. John, what would you do? How would you reshape it just based on seeding? Yeah, maybe like, um, I don't know, at least get some of the, like, well, get get the Dolphins and get them in a division that they maybe have a chance to win, you know? Yeah, so the good teams will take out the good teams. <laughs> this guy's deal. I mean, hey, hey, John, John, I understand what you're saying. Like, maybe that's what the seven, week 17 or week 18, 17th game premier game is all about we're mm -hmm. going to see matchups we don't normally see i think if you shake up the division that entails a lot of things and you're going to talk about you know fairness and everything like that I, I appreciate where your head's at john thinking about the super league but i'm not sure that's something the nfl wants to get into business of doing because they're going to have to do that on a regular basis mm -hmm. then and the super league is fucking dead it is officially dead <laughs> super league's dead yeah, yeah. Hey! Hey! Congratulations to everybody on earth that watches soccer, except for the owners that stood to make billions and billions of dollars off of this Super League, this middle of the week uh, league that they created where they named who was going to be in there as opposed to the Champions League in which you have to earn your way into that. It is officially dead. I saw uh, teams did back out. Yeah, I think there's uh, like six or seven and have backed out now. And, right, it's, it's officially dead. Hey, by the way, fans don't win a lot. No. The people can be heard but not often listened to on a regular basis it feels like the soccer community who said this is going to fuck up every single foundation of everything we believed in for centuries now have come together and got a big win over those greedy yep. corporate fat cats good for them yes. yeah. good for the fan Woo. good for the fan AJ. I, i'll still not watch any of the games no no way no nope. but good for them i'm pumped up for them yeah if it was the super league you would have 
watch the first like four minutes of the first Super League game, and then you would have moved on with your life, I'm sure. But, but, but that next week, whenever I heard Christian is potentially oh. playing against old pal from oh, what other team I know exists. Yeah, yeah. messy. Oh. Big, win, big win for us, though, hey. because our main star, Christian Pulisic, it can now play in the World Cup. Now we win the World Cup again. We're oh. back. Here we go. Good news for us. You're right. Yeah. I was thinking like selflessly. I was thinking about good for them, not good for me. You know what I mean? But really, ultimately, this is very good for us. Yeah. We win again. We win again. Good for us, AJ. We win again. Well, don't you think this is one of the very rare situations to where the fans, how they feel about it, is this really the same as the players, the mm-hmm. coaches? I don't know that's if the talking players about soccer yeah, but, on TV on the internet too. I don't know if all of the players felt this way. Every player that's come, well, I guess no one's going to come out with it. Yes. But a lot of players came out against it. And the coaches, man. Like, Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, when he came out and said, like, this is fucking stupid, like, that guy turned Liverpool around. Liverpool was dead before Klopp came to coach them. I wonder if Klopp knows the reason why that was made is because the person that hired him to be the coach is looking at the bank account that was going to grow exponentially <laughs> very, very quickly. Money always wins in this situation. Always, always, always. And now we have to look back at the European Super League and say money got turned down, actually. Yeah. yeah. For, for the love of the game. Hell yeah. Oh, Beautiful Benito. game, my friend. Good for soccer. Dude. Oh, God. Good win. Yeah. The fans did it. Fans did it. Now, there have been fans of politics that have come together and won some things as well. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's where the history, where the history of our world. I guess YouTube comment section through that entire conversation with Anthony Gonzalez uh, was trying to tear us, uh, tear us all down for being either one a member of each party. I guess we got attacked by oh. both parties there at one point. I want to let you know, I've said this before and I mean it, and you can run this back later. I'm too fucking stupid to be the person you listen to when it comes to the politic world. I know nothing about it. You'll never get this. So if you're coming, you'll never get this. I, I don't know what I am, so I don't know how the fuck you would. Just know that I'm, I'm bebopping through this life. Very thankful for Anthony Gonzalez, though, today, AJ. Yeah, I, I, and I can honestly say I don't really know what Gonzo's policies are and what's he, what he's done. I support him as a friend. I don't follow his like political career, really. I saw he was getting attacked, I think, by the people that were on his team there yeah. for a little bit. No so. way. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's going to happen in politics. That's right. True. Turn on each other. You son of a bitch. (laughs) It's a terrible bill. Oh, I need you now, though. Hey, remember what I said? I don't mean it. Come on. Fucking right. Put our swords down. Vote yes. We're on the same side. You motherfucker. (laughs) I feel like there's a lot of that over there. Sounds impossible. It sounds absolutely impossible to get anything done. He said something what's coming in two years? Two years. Two years. Hey, two years from now, you know? Maybe. He thought that. He thought you may have thought that was a short amount of time, too. That's unbelievable. I felt like it. Unbelievable. The internet, a day is a week, a week is a month, a month might as well be a year. When you're talking about 24 months potentially, you're talking about what? Two different generations of internet stories potentially coming and going 55 different times. There's no way we have any clue what the world's going to be like 24 months. I'm just hoping the world's still here in yeah. two years. I mean, geez. How, why don't they do PowerPoints and deck presentations? Yes. Should make it so much easier. Maybe it wouldn't be 24 months then. Maybe we can yeah. get them just to hit like a that. Yeah, I vote yes. Here, look, this is what you're going to do. You're oh, that'd be sweet. You're going to look at your iPad, okay? okay. And then one half of it's going to be green. Okay, that's uh-huh. for yes. And one half is going to be red. That's for no. Okay. And you can even get like those 95-year-olds that have been in uh, in um, in their position for, I don't know, 60 years and just have ah, I like that one. That's good. Sure. That is, that's right, right? That is what we like. I don't get to tag. What am I? I'm colorblind. I hope if someone's in that state, they they may step down. Well, that's no, not how no, politics no. work. I think <laughs> no way. For the little bit that I know, that is not how politics yeah, work. They're willing to die in there. Like Gonzo saying right. he doesn't want to be president, I don't think that's a normal thing at all for a rep to say either. Uh-huh. I think they are all attempting to hopefully make it to the big leagues, which is, you know, Pennsylvania Avenue. Let's go. Through. I was going to tell him. I, I was going to tell him quickly to go. He better go and run for president before the Rock does, because the Rock, he Ooh, might wow. take hold of it and never give it back. It may change the law for him. Oh, yeah. Oh, Julius Caesar. I could see Dewey doing that, huh? Oh, yeah. New episode tonight. Let's go to the phones. Season finale? But I made time. Huh? Is it the season finale? No, hopefully there's a lot more episodes. Uh, Hopefully. Hopefully (laughs) Hopefully there's a lot more episodes. Because you like to punish yourself? Yeah, they've been good? Come on. It's good up. These good. last two episodes, pretty good episodes. Is he still top of the charts? What's yeah. that? Oh, obviously. Still top, top of the charts, right? In I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure if anybody's watching that show anymore. But oh, I, why? I, I will watch no, it. The Rock Google says everyone's watching it. I thought it was awesome. Uh, Junior Rock is what people call it. It's, not, it's called Young Rock. It's called Young Rock. 
it has <laughs> the rating has dropped quite. I would oh, say the last two episodes oh, really quite a number. bit on IMDb. I would say the last. Speaking of IMDb, uh, Aaron Rodgers is trying to build an athlete one. Two point five million dollars invested in that. Were you invested? One of the investors in that thing? No, I'm not involved. Oh, in that. Don't be an idiot. Oh, the Rock and Stone Cold talking about each other on Stone Cold Stock was awesome. Pretty, oh. pretty emotional moment there. I love you. They said in the ring, yeah, I love you to each other. That was wild. And then they just go about their certain way. Remember, when Steve came on this show, I asked him about doing a buddy cop with The Rock. And the way he said it was like, no, you know, like, The Rock don't need me. Yeah. No. <laughs> the Rock don't need me. They were amazing together. Oh. That, that documentary on A&E was fantastic. I can't wait to see the more and more that comes out of it. AJ, we got 20 seconds until the SiriusXM channel uh, moves on to a better host than us. Do you have anything to say? No, I think I'm I'm good. I, happy 420 to you and the boys and everyone else out there. I hope you're you're having a good day. Happy 420 to you too, AJ. You've looked dope out of your Dog mind. Too. Yeah. Happy 420 and to Chris Mad Dog, Dog Ruth. Oh. Uh, his show will be better than ours. We'll be back tomorrow. See you, dude. See ya. <laughs> great, great closeout. It's fucking great. I didn't even get one last happy 420 in there. Fucking unbelievable. Hey, you got one with uh, 55 left. Got a little happy right, I did 20. give a happy 40. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I hit it enough. By the way, if you like this shirt, you can buy it. Uh All proceeds will go towards Further Brand, which helps families that are battling through canine cancer treatments, which we learned is very expensive very quickly. Uh, my wife and I learned about it with Valerie. So she started a foundation to do it. Great shirt. I think you'll love it, especially on today. Go ahead and go ahead and give it a purchase. Hey, do you guys get uh, pet insurance for any of your dogs? I don't think so. I should though, huh? Yeah, I did it and I regretted it. Like when you, if you get it when they're a puppy, it's like forty bucks a month. Mm -hmm. But the older you get, the more expensive it is. I've always been a insurance is is a hustle potentially. No, yeah. Like I'm forced into having obviously house and car and everything mm -hmm. like that. But everybody, I don't even put it. I mean, my fucking phone is caseless. Dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I, I, I'm wild. like, hey, let's go ahead and live a little bit. But at at this point with the payments that I've had to do for Valerie and what we learned about how expensive some of this shit is, if it would have helped, I seem like it, it probably would have been a good idea. Yeah, we, uh, well, yeah, one of my, my older dog who's 12, we went through a situation with her where she was in med vet for five days, crazy surgery, all this stuff. Now she's back home and she's able to walk. Everything's cool. But we have a Congrats. puppy as well that we just got. The puppy, Kevin, we're like, all right, I was online that night getting that dude pet insurance yeah. in case this happens for him. Hey, Kev, listen, we learned from your older sibling here. Mm -hmm. Your ass is going to be protected for 40 bucks a month. We might oh, never yeah. need it, but that's what insurance is. Nope. They're just taking that money regardless. Yep. And then when you need them, actually, they're going to try to pry and see if they really do have to be held accountable for all of the years and years of payments you made where they have just been collecting and raking money. And then whenever it comes time to potentially need them, they go, Actually, so, uh, unfortunately, your insurance is only going to cover about 25% of this bill. Okay. So, uh, what have I, mean, I been paying for fucking 20 years for? Well, I don't know. You know, you got to get better insurance, I guess. Oh, okay. Oh, Good Lord. Gosh, all right. Well, by the way, Gabby Insurance, get yeah, a better true. insurance. It's Probably, actually, yeah. that's why Gabby was founded, which we are very thankful for. That was a mind blower for me. Let's go to Tim in New York. What's going on, Tim? Yo, what's going on, Pat, boys? Hey, happy 420, Tim. What do you want to talk about? Uh, hey, you had uh, Delvin Cook on yesterday, and you mentioned about working out with uh, running backs, other running backs down in Florida. Is it common in the off season for uh, professional players to, to work out with uh, with other team uh, other team players um, on different teams, or is that kind of frowned upon? Great question, Tim. It has become more and more and more and more normal. This has become a very the defensive end Von Miller. They put together like a a summit or something like that, and then the offensive linemen start doing it. It feels like the position groups are starting to look out for each other a lot more than they did in the past. The punters and kickers always used to work out together. I was a loner. I did not like working out with other people, but I would go to camps to kind of say hello, how you doing. It wasn't my preferred method. I think situations are situational here, but as we get, as we move along, I think it's starting to become a much more normal thing. Don't you, AJ? Yeah, it's, it's super normal. And I believe he said he's been working out with um, J.K. Dobbins down there. It, any, anytime you're anywhere in South Florida, there's a good chance there's a lot of professional athletes there and they're working out together if they're in the offseason. Like receivers tend to work out together a lot. DBs maybe. 
yeah, it's if you have other pro athletes in the area that you're staying or that you live in the off season, a lot of times it just somehow tends to to meet up and you're all working out the same spot. Hey, iron sharpens iron too. If you get a chance to work alongside somebody else that's doing what you're doing for a living, I mean, that's going to heighten how hard you're going. That's going to teach you some things. It's going to make the game better. I know initially this was, uh, there was some backlash, you know, like, hey, who cares about that person? Why are you trying to make that person better? It's like, well, he's also making me better too. So yeah. can we, is there's a little bit of a give and take in this And hey, guess what? I may be teammates with this person in six months when my team cuts me or trades me. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, Adrian Peterson was working with uh, Najee Harris, I believe. Mm. They they were running sprints on this incline that had turf on it. It looked like this hill was straight up and down. And it was like, oh, that's why Adrian Peterson's Adrian Peterson. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. That's what he's just running sprints on. He said that there's a lot of workouts he does with these younger guys, and he thinks that he'll be able to know when the time is up whenever he's not beating everybody. Yeah, I don't know if he was working out with anybody, uh, but Thomas Morstead was bombing footballs on Twitter. Yeah. I, I mean, I think oh, did he, was, he post that video? Yeah, he posted the video of it. He was slaughtering them. So he sent that to me privately. Yeah. And he said, uh, hey, I appreciate you going to bat for me all last year. I had some things I was going through. I did not know, to be honest, whether or not physically he was going to be able to bounce back. And then he sent me that video and he said, we're back, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And I, I looked at the video. And I was like, God damn. He's murdering balls again. He is one of the guys, though, that has helped out. A lot of guys like he's a guy that works with the specialists like a lot of punters around the nfl have worked with thomas and been like hey thank you what was he what was he going through what kind of injury i, I don't know I, I don't want to be the one he told me a couple of things but i'm not gonna be the one to tell a story but he he went through a couple of things that would definitely hamper hamper is that a word yeah yeah damper hamper da either, either or hampen hampen no, that's not. Shut up, AJ. You're a stooge. What are you all doped up? So Good Jamie, to have you guys back. <laughs> like I was hampered by a knee injury. So Jamie Cole uh, owns Cole's Kicking. There, that is the camp that I go to. A lot of pros like go to the these store. Camp. No, it's uh, his last name. But I, I would assume he's not related, or he would not be traveling around hustling these camps <laughs> every fucking day. But yeah, he's hitting five two, sixty five yards. I think he hits like ten straight five zero balls or something like Why? that. By the way, this clip has continued here. It is not edited. Is he, he's a one-step oh punter? Yeah, so he had to do that because his hands weren't as good. His hands weren't as good whenever he came into the NFL. He was actually tasked for being my holder at the Senior Bowl, never held before. <laughs> Couldn't catch. Wasn't a good catcher. Like, that was something. Uh -huh. So, like, to hold, you got to catch a ball like a, like a wide receiver. To punt, you got to catch it, like, palms up. So, it's two very different styles. He had no idea how to catch. Was very a friend of mine at the time. Had worked together a couple uh, off seasons together. It's like, man, I have never held before or whatever. Actually, when he gets drafted to the Saints to punt, he had to move up to 13 yards, and he actually shortened his punting step so he could have a little bit more time with the catch to get the ball secure. Now he's, what, 12 years into this thing. Yeah, his hands are good. Stuck. He's holding now. I, I think it took him like two, three years to become the holder because Chase Daniel was holding down there for a little bit. But, yeah, at this point, he's going to get a lot of offers, I'd assume, to go join a team. And if not, he'll join a team in the middle of the season, hopefully going. Super Bowl run. He is so fucking good at punting footballs. This, see, this is like awesome to watch here. Like I enjoy watching this stuff here. This is something I enjoy. How far do we know? Oh, it says up there that thing goes seventy nine yards. Yeah. They said. Yeah, and that's not from where he punted. It. That's from the line of scrimmage. Really? <laughs> yeah. So that ball is fucking murdered. I would, I would assume that he potentially has a wind behind him, but the wind hurts you with hang time if it's behind you too much because it actually beats the ball down. So he's hitting like 505, 62-yard bomb. Like, that's fucking, that's, that's obnoxious. Like, if I was Jake Bailey, by the way, yeah. and I had Slater and Bethel as, um, as my gunners, which they currently have, I'd be doing what he was doing. But I would just drop it down to like a 3 2, and I would just hit that thing 70 yards every single time. Yeah, I don't know why you haven't reached out to Belichick to make sure Bailey's doing this this upcoming <laughs> season. We need that to happen. <laughs> Belichick's a little smarter than I am in the football world, but I would just be thinking specifically as Bailey's standpoint. Yeah. If I had those two guys, I'd just be line driving that thing. Pack, hey, is he? Go get this guy. Pat, does his get off much faster than other people, or is it just he seems like it's one step, but he does take his time? Yeah, it, he moved. He moved up to – because most people's block spot, it doesn't matter how you get there, is about 10 yards, 9.5 yards. So however many yards behind that you line up is basically how long your steps are. For instance, I started at 15 yards because my stride was very long because I used to be a rugby rollout punter or, or Aussie rules football rollout punter. 
So then as I got better and better and my steps got shorter, I started, you know, stealing yards off the back there. Okay, I go up to 14, 13 and a half, depending on the look, six man box is coming at me. So they got both gunners doubled as soon as you see that, probably a hold up so I can move up maybe even to 12, punt this thing at like eight yards as opposed to 10 because there isn't really a rush coming. He stands at like 13, 13 and a half and it's out by 10 every single time. It's just like clockwork. But he had to move up and change because the his hands weren't as good when he started. Now he has great great hands and he has short steps so it's kind of like a win-win on both sides there as he moves forward I, yeah, I guess i never really thought of all the technical stuff that goes into it I you knew, weren't like, a punter distance, yeah. how far back and all of that <laughs> yeah you weren't a punter so it's like yeah, these are all things i mean that... i kind of was a punter and i went punted in high school i didn't i didn't oh, quite yeah. put the thought that you guys put into it though. well it's like yeah i can steal a yard off the back here so if i move up a yard i can steal instead of a 44 yard average i have a 45 yard average that's fucking huge that's a huge difference but so, then if you get if you if you inch forward and you get one block then your coach is going to slice your neck and by the way your net is ruined too because it's a negative yard net so it's like it's a real you know it's a gamble you gotta you gotta have a little feel out there and when you can steal a little yard or two you know what i mean you gotta have a little feel if you were trying to like pooch one because like, you were so close would you step back ever no it can't go further than 15 because the snapper and the good time uh, you know what i mean yeah now granted if you got a guy that's just a rocket ship you guys drafted one out of hawaii ingram jake ingram he was the long snapper in the senior bowl. He got drafted to the Patriots. He, Thomas was trying to hold for the first time, and this guy <laughs> fucking rockets. Bullets. The f- <laughs> fastest snap still to this day I think I've ever seen from Damn. Him. It's not necessarily a great thing. I think they were actually trying to slow him <laughs> yeah, down. I was going to say, he is not with the Patriots anymore, yeah, I do believe. He was a really cool guy, great athlete, snapper, but he used to... He fucking brought that. Thing. That helps out a lot, though, too, because if it even saves you like a quarter of a second, even that like helps out a lot. Everything yeah. kind of goes Think into about it. it. It reminds me of driving, like my left foot, left right. foot, right foot. Using both of them, I definitely save it. All right, let's go to time. Hey, your own state rep said you're a stooge. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I t- trust me. I can handle it. I can handle you. Uh, call me yeah. whatever you uh, want. For me, I'm making the road safer, so you're welcome. No, you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to Tom in Wisconsin. Reps in your own state said it's dangerous. Yeah. So stop doing it. That's where insurance com- uh, companies are setting their rates and everything. I mean, you're you're a problem. Okay. Hey, I said I I, su- I I support Gonzo as a friend. That's who I know him. I don't know all of the other <laughs> things he has going on. Well, he's going to try to ban what you got going yeah. on when you're driving. For he the thinks you're the, a moron. For the, for the constituents of Ohio. Yeah. For the constituents of Ohio. <laughs> Good luck catching me. Yeah, what do you think? You're gonna put a, they're going to put a sensor on that. See if you're just riding a, the brake the entire time. Pull them over. Throw them in jail. Maybe send them down to, what's that one downer? Guantanamo. Guantanamo. Yeah. Send them down to where you belong. <laughs> How's your gas mileage? Do you have to fill up your tank like eight times a week? <laughs> Ty, what, what makes you think I'm running? The, I'm, I'm riding the brake. I'm not riding Because you obviously yeah, stink you at driving yeah, because you, you use both feet. I'm super smooth with it. I probably yeah. hit the brake much less than you guys. I oh, doubt it. No, you don't, though. Like, that is just a... Your foot is resting on it. Because you're looking... No, you guys are looking right in front of you. I learned this from like Luke Fickle back in the day. He told me, hey, oh, when you're boy. driving, man, you don't look in the car in front of you. You're looking like seven cars in front yeah. of you, and you're feeling what's happening between there. And that's exactly how you... If you're playing linebacker and you're five yards deep, I'm not looking like at anyone directly. I'm feeling the offensive lineman, looking at this triangle running back. The formation, the, t- the yeah. quarterback, where he's at. Got it. That's what I'm doing. I'm driving. Yeah. What did, did you tell Fickle though? You drive like a fucking asshole though. Because <laughs> I think he would have said, "Listen, you want to look seven cars ahead, but before we do that, let's take care of what we're doing with our feet." I think because fundamentals and basic, uh, you know, your uh, 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 foundation of how you drive, much more important. Let's go through the bags first before we start looking seven cars ahead. I assume is what Fickle would say. Who's a great college football head coach right now at Cincinnati? Yeah. I have a ton of respect for him. I don't know if he was, if he was against the two-footed driving. You know what? I would still stick with it, but I'd respect his opinion. As well. <laughs> <laughs> he ever tell you not to be an idiot too? Huh? Oh. That oh, actually, a lot. He told myself, General Bob Anschlegel, that almost every day. Hey, boys, got a pretty good little group here, right? Yeah. I'm gonna be a head coach somewhere. Mm-hmm. Crack top five for a school that's not supposed to be in top five anymore. Sure. You guys probably all gonna have very successful careers doing whatever the fuck you're doing. Can we not be idiots all the time? Don't be stooges. Don't be stooges. You guys didn't listen. Not a word he said. Yeah, we we listened, man. We definitely mm-hmm. listened. I can't believe he has not taken a... Like, I appreciate the fact that he has remained loyal to the state of Cincinnati. All of his assistants are trying to get plucked elsewhere. He's probably trying to get plucked elsewhere. He has stayed locked down in there. Cincinnati's got a good program growing. 
Yeah, he's he's built him up in, into something special, and I, I think the only way for like. I don't know what those schools would be, what those jobs would be, but there's probably only one or two jobs he would leave for. What do you think they are? I mean, I would hope at some point in his career he might want to coach Ohio State. But other than that, I, I honestly don't know another school like that, he would, that would make him move. He's got, what, five, six kids now? Like, I don't know. You the, think he, he wouldn't just take off. You think Luke Fickle comes on the show right now as the head coach of Cincinnati? I say OH, he says IO? Uh, yeah, he would because he played there. Probably not to you, though. He he, he Obviously, there's no way he even knows – anything that's going on between me and you but he would probably sense your sarcasm and would just hang up right away i'm not being sarcastic oh, yeah no way are you up to something i'm always up to something dude. <laughs> let's go tom in wisconsin what's going on tom what's up can you guys hear me yeah tom we're gonna have to wrap this up pretty soon though because there is a water pipe that is calling my name from the other room for a celebration of the holiday what do you want to talk about tom i hear that i gotta wrap up a speech for a class and we are definitely hitting 420. good luck yeah. Yeah. good luck on that speech remember they're lucky to hear you speak it's not the other way around what do you want to talk about um well i just want to say i hope you guys are all doing well um i'm from Thanks. minnesota but i go to school here in wisconsin Welcome. so i live with a bunch of packer fans and, boy, it seems really nice to be a Packers fan all the time because I'm a Viking fan, and that is a rough life. So it's like every other year makes playoffs, and other than that, it kind of stinks. Yeah, Tom, um, but, Tom, like 15, 20 years from now, if you were a Packers fan, people would be like, why are you a Packers fan? you say, well, I was a Vikings fan. Then I had to, I went to college in Wisconsin, and, man, it was, it's much better to be a Packers fan than it was a Vikers fan. I don't think anybody would kind of hold that against you. Well, that's what I'm hoping for. So, one, I wanted to say thanks for showing me Aaron Rodgers' personality because I used to hate that guy ripping out my dreams twice a year. And, yeah, yeah just a rough time. But okay. uh, I think this year that the Vikings should either take one of those second-round guys like Kellen Mond or Jesus. a guy like even move up in the draft and try and get like a real quarterback because Kirk just isn't cutting it with how much he's getting paid. Jesus. Do you think – Tom. Is that wrong? Oh, good. Well, you're a turncoat anyway, though, right? Just two yeah. years ago, right? Went down to New Orleans, won a playoff game. Yeah. yeah. Kyle Rudolph shoved a guy yeah. into the front That's row true. before he yeah. caught it. But, I mean, they had success two years ago. Last year, not as much as I, I assume they all hoped they had. New offensive coordinator in there, knew everything. Dalvin Cook, number two in rushing in the NFL. Kirk Cousins might be holding him back. We'll find out next year. It's going to be a shame that he's going to jump to the Packers this season, and it's going to be awesome. But then next season, Jordan Love's going to be – the season after Jordan Love's going to be starting, and then he's going to deal with that. that. Dude, he's back to New England. No way. Do you see that bullshit piece of paper that was on somebody's yeah. desk? <laughs> Who put that out? No, that was, that was Mark Murphy's desk. <laughs> Confirmed. It was. What do you mean? It's I mean, a there's dumb some creative deal. people to put that out there. <laughs> well, Jimmy from the Colts. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to Bobby Johnny down there in West Virginia. Bobby Johnny, great to hear from you again. What do you want to talk about? Hi, Bob. I uh, hey, really, Bob. really enjoyed hearing everything that Gonzalez had to say. That was electric, man. Um, Politics show. I'm curious when you guys was going to have uh, Kay Adams or Peter Schrager on here. Good morning football, and you guys are the best two football shows there ever was. I think Schrager was on the show, wasn't he? He has been on the show yep. before, yes. Kay, I think. All right, I missed that. Well, uh, Kyle's been on. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah, Nate's been on. Nate's Kyle. been on. Peter's been on. Kay Sean O'Hara has been on. Sean O'Hara has been on. Kay has not been on. You're right. We do have to have Kay on that show. We're big fans of that show as well. Mm -hmm. Emmy nominated show, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Morning football. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess that show is considered amongst the the elites that you hang around, mm -hmm. like the like you know like the fun. Yeah. Thanks, AJ. Yeah. It is. Is this, well, does your show, does this even um, no. get consideration because it's technically on Sirius? Like, those shows aren't on radio, too. We're on YouTube. I know. I, do they recognize that? They should. Well, apparently, uh, apparently, apparently, they, <laughs> they do not. Dan Patrick shows on Peacock. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Who has isn't more, there like a, who has isn't more there a category for streaming or something? Who has more subscribers? Peacock, Peacock is or streaming. YouTube? Peacock or YouTube? Who has more subscribers? YouTube. Yes. Easy. I would assume. So. Wasn't a portion of last year, Patrick, what, Dan Patrick was on YouTube, wasn't he? And Rich, yeah, there for a little bit. Then he went on to Peacock. Hmm. Congrats to both of them, by the way. Hmm. Dan Patrick has also been in this game for 30 years, 30 setting, years for setting sure. the standard. Oh, yeah. I'm How many has he won? Like, hasn't Herbie won, like, 15 sports Emmys? Do they count? Do you get actual things? Oh, yeah. Are Herbie's these real trophies? things? Herbie's nominated again. Katie Nolan won one at some point, I know. Are these real things though? Like they go up here? Oh, yeah. Trophies. On the front. 
Really? We should order. Let's order a couple off of Amazon. Put them in the background. Pawn Stars probably has what four to five. Oh, yeah. At least we need to call that bald fuck right now and go get one. <laughs> Best I can do is thirty seven. <laughs> hey, I know it's been sitting on the fucking car on the shelves, pal. Rick, is that Rick? <laughs> yeah, yes. Rick Harrison. Fork it over. Dan's got twelve uh, sports Emmys. Jesus. For a studio host, though, I don't know if it's for his show. It's his first. It says studio host. Good for Dan, dude. Deserve hey, what are the it. other categories? I'd like to know. I don't know either. They, these are just now. I'm just now learning about these sports Emmys. You, you know the people that make these decisions, and you refuse to put our name into their ears. Oh man, I love how you think I know. Like I do, do, dude. Who do you think I am? AJ, AJ Hawk. Hawk. Yeah, Clint do you Clark. think that I, dude? Does my personality come across as a guy that's going to go out, go out yes. of his way to go like find AJ. people I don't know and introduce myself? AJ, you're at Augusta. You're at Augusta last week. Yeah. You had to Mike. Okay, how many people I talked to at Augusta? That's how many people. Well, that's I what I'm saying. You get into these events, shake these hands. We want fake shake Emmys. Yeah, Brett Michaels tour bus. Like you got to yeah. be able yeah, to do other stuff. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, you're in. You're at Tahoe. Yeah, he's at Tahoe. Yeah. He's at all these events. He, he could just, what, he was at the Met Gala, what, last yeah, year? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Him and his Brady. wife were like click clack, they had the whole thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> you were at one of Kanye's yeah. Sunday services that one time? Oh, really? Yeah. He, it turns out he didn't pay anybody. No. I really? wish. I tried. I tried to After go. I, I wanted deal. to get to one. 950 million gap deal. How much money is going to be spent on cloth, though? Mm. He's trying to design yeah, lobbies and nail it, <laughs> design what? hotels and nail it. So hey, I saw the, the Zions. I like Zion shoes. Okay, oh. let's talk about it. Zion Williamson going into the league, signed a $75 million deal alongside the Jordan brand. It's the second largest shoe deal for a pre-rookie that the world has ever seen behind LeBron James, who got a $90 million deal with Nike. Zion ones have officially been debuted, and they are sweet. I love these shoes. I love Zion. I love just a couple days ago. He's talking about being in New York, talking about, <laughs> yeah. I love playing. Aside from New Orleans, I love playing here. I like the energy. I like everything about it. So New York Knicks fans across the world who now see Randall playing basketball well, we could get Zion, Randall, build up this entire thing while the Brooklyn Nets are acquiring every single talented basketball player in the same city. The Knicks fans got a glimmer of hope that the future of basketball Zion, who's probably going to go on to have at least Zion 13, Zion 14, yep. Zion 15. He said he wouldn't mind playing in New York. Loves that place, obviously, behind New Orleans. I hope, personally, that New Orleans either tries to get in the game of winning championships. Uh, I'm glad you asked that, actually. Uh, I mean, New York is the mecca of basketball. Okay, cool. Uh, he he either get him. in the game or let him the fuck out and let him go somewhere else. Oh, yeah. It's one of the other. Like, I love the Pelicans. Mm. They allowed me to introduce Zion third, yeah. okay, yeah. Or, or second or whatever. They're very nice of them. But if you're not going to get in the game, let the world see this guy who is maybe the most – he's – He's an enigma. It's an anomaly. It makes no sense. He flies in soars, and there's no reason he should. He has been on the Internet for 10, 15 years at this point. I hope the world gets to see him on a more regular basis. I hope these Zion ones sell the hell out. Oh, yeah. Are they for like, – can you buy them now? Are they out? No. Not no, I, don't, I think they were just like kind of teased or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the – like – Behind Jordans, like what's the biggest shoe? So that Kobe, right now, like player, player oriented. Interesting you say that because obviously the Bronze uh, do very well. Kobe, uh, the Mambas, I think he had a, a great shoe line. Mm -hmm. Vanessa just canceled the deal with Nike, or, or the yep. deal came to an end, did not extend it. So where will Kobe Bryant's potential shoe game land, or is the Bryant family saying we don't want to make shoes anymore because uh, it could be too tough? I'm not oh, sure. No. Free agent. She's a, she, they're a free agent now because she was upset, I think, what, from what I read, that they made it way too exclusive to get the Kobe's. They wanted more people to have the, the capability to get them. To experience. So Nike, who had a, what, a senior oh. manager's son oh, yeah, who right. was yeah. running a yeah. secondary market shoe game to the tune of millions. Hey! of dollars they probably had to do a full education process not only about 
the secondary shoe market because of that situation, but also because this this whole exclusive shoe game, the prices are getting insane. It's an investment at this point, as opposed to just buying shoes. I would assume Nike pitched that idea where if we only release a few, the price of these things will be able to go through the roof. Vanessa says we want more people. I did not know that. So hopefully we'll be able to get to see some more Kobe's because I did enjoy the hell out of those shoes. Zion's come out April 23rd, which is three days from now. Here we go. Uh, that's 420. 420. 420. The Kobe shoe will definitely join uh, the Jordan brand, no doubt about it. What do you mean? But that's rivaling? part of Nike. No, no, it's part of Nike. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Never mind. Are then. you talking about rival sales? Uh, no, I was just saying like if they were looking for a different. Oh, avenue yeah, yeah, that's Nike. Yeah, yeah. It's, Jordan's a Nike brand. Jordan's, well, like LeBron's are considered Nike. They're not considered Jordan brand, right? No, oh, yeah, correct. It's LeBron's with Nike. Yeah, right. Zion signed with Jordan brand, which is a. KD's also another huge part of the company. Yeah. KD yeah. shoes are very. Because nice. that's the only yeah. four Westbrook's. athletes are right now active with Jordan brand. Is that what I saw? Like only NBA? four. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. uh, Chris Paul, Russell Carmelo Westbrook, Anthony, and uh, Russell Westbrook, and yeah. then Zion. I tried to get on the Jordan brand. I wanted to be the first Caucasian in the NFL to join the Jordan brand. <laughs> I got turned down. I was I was in, I was in Franey's ear, like yo, yo, please <laughs> make this happen. Can you relay the message. You, you just gotta bring back the the Jordan clips. Please, God. You just gotta bring them back. <laughs> My favorite shoe of all time. Can't find them. I found a person that makes them. See, that's probably why. That's probably not good. That person's probably going to end up in jail, but we need to buy as many as possible from that yeah. person. Before There's actually quite a few NBA players with the Jordan brand. Yeah, I, I would assume. The Luka, four things Tatum, like a bit. Chris Paul. Oh, with actual Zion. shoes, right? Oh, okay. Oh, you're There's talking the... about their own shoes through yes. the Jordan brand. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes, yeah. Got it. Hey, don't some... Uh, There's some NBA players I know that have, like, those big... Like Chinese deals, right? With the Chinese oh, yeah. shoe company. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Starberry, dude. Remember the Starberries were oh, big. Huge. Yeah. Those were Still awesome. Are. Those were huge. Those are very uncomfortable shoes. D Wade, I think D Wade had one for a while. Oh, the that. Shaq shoes. Now he has his own as well. You know, I met the guy. I've told this before. The agent that did the the Jordan deal, the, yeah. ball, oh, the yeah. guy that was on the dock. Mm -hmm. yep. I know. I've got his number on the phone. Could text him yeah. right now. He would answer. You had him on the show, I think. No, I don't think so. I don't know him that well. No, you. Um, you texted him right after uh, the, the dock. Yeah, the dock, and he responded. And he responded. Yeah. yeah. Good agent. Good agent. Falk, right? Michael Falk. Is yeah, it? there it is. Let me see what his name is. David Falk, Some, I think. David Falk. Let me see. You guys want to know his number? Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. Give yeah, because Andrew Brandt worked below him, right? Give uh, give us Pivens, too. <laughs> What's that, dude? So give us Pivens' number while you're at it. Okay, here, Pivens actually just popped up. 310. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep going. <laughs> What if me, you did? Me and AQ Shipley, I was 420 out of my mind at a Pacers game, and this bald-headed guy sitting right next to me in a jeans and a sport coat or whatever. Roy Hibbert were right on the uh, baseline there. I'm trying to get rebounds all the all game. Like I, <laughs> I actually had a goal of getting three rebounds. You know what I mean? Like I was, it was a good time to go to those Pacer games at a time. They were a blast or whatever. And this guy sitting next to me, Roy Hibbert, does like this dunk or whatever, then he kind of stumbles into us. Daps me up, gives me a full hello, how you doing, and then walks away. The guy next to me goes, uh, who are you? And I go, who are you? <laughs> who are you? You know, he goes, well, I'm a guy that reps Roy that just got dapped up or that didn't get dapped up over you, whoever you are. And I was like, oh, nice to meet you, sir. And then we sat back down or whatever, and AQ and I are fucking off. And uh, I go back to that guy. I'm like, uh, nice to meet you, by the way, man. And AQ was like, I think that's a, uh, I think that's a, uh, I think that's the guy, like AQ, big guy. AQ, big Michael Jordan fan. My, AQ's a massive Michael Jordan fan. So I go, uh, hey man, it's an honor to meet you or whatever. I've heard you've been uh, a part of some imp uh, pretty impressive stuff or whatever. And he goes, uh, he looks at my shoes, I was wearing Jordans. He was like, yeah, I helped create those or whatever. And I was like, oh, Whoa. AQ, this is the guy. <laughs> yeah, you're right. AQ, this is the guy. So for the next, you know, like three quarters or whatever, I'm just bullshitting with this guy. He's like, here's my number. You ever need me, let me know. And that is just classic, like, I will never text you. I understand what just happened. Let's wrap this thing up. And then years later, I text him after the 30 for 30, and he responds with, hey, it's a fun ride. Great to hear from you, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, you're a good guy. Genius of a man, though, to do the shoe deal and do the Nike deal and kind of do He was supposed to be Adidas. I guess Jordan's mom kind of made him do the Nike trip. And then the whole, I mean, it's just they revolutionized sports marketing, those guys. Well, maybe you can put in a good, get him to put in a good word for a sports Emmy maybe next year when uh, when they're coming up. But also, I don't do think it. he was still, he wasn't with Nike when they lost Steph. Remember, haven't you heard the story when Steph was going around to all the different shoe companies and 
I guess Nike spelled his name wrong in like they like a PowerPoint deck. Like you this said, guy wasn't right. with Nike. This guy was an agent. I know. Okay. I know. I'm okay. just saying, like, what a what a colossal fail Steph by Nike. Been absolutely. The lawnmower ones. Well, hey, oh. the grass cutters that he launched with Under Armour were terrible, but the pitch deck that they put together for Steph. And by the way, I think his newest version of shoes. Yeah. Rather dope. Yeah. Awesome. I think my wife just they bought are. me a couple pair. By the he way, he has a golf line too. Under Armour has a whole yeah. Steph golf line. Yeah, but. The pitch deck thing where they spell his name wrong or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just imagine Steph just being like, these motherfuckers can't even spell my goddamn name right. I'm not going here. I'm going to go somewhere else and launch an entire business for them, basically make a couple hundred million. And I'm going to change the game of basketball. I'm going to disappear for a couple of years. Then I'm going to come back and people are going to forget how good I once was. And he's unbelievable right now. Steph Curry is up to his old shit. <laughs> Steph Curry's pulling up from half court yeah. unannounced and it's splash every single time. Their team stinks, but he is mm -hmm. unbelievable at basketball right now. So and they're going to be the playing game or at the moment. They're yeah. the nine seed, so they would be part of that whole nine versus ten versus the loser of eight versus is seven. Is that Zion potentially or no? Is Zion oh, I don't know. Nowhere near it? Yeah, I don't if we get Zion so. Steph <laughs> in a oh, playing man. game, oh. winner gets well, the game. When, here, when does this happen? Like, when will wrong. the playoffs happen? Uh, soon. Yeah, actually, I think yeah. next week, week after. So they're about 60 games in. They're not playing a full 82, right? No, 72 so, games, yeah. yeah. Foxy hates Diggs, by the way. What? <laughs> Why? Why? Just a full sense there. The Fox was not even thinking about cutting it. Oh, I, I, I had either. it all. I wouldn't either. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. You just thought about it. It's not a good looking day yeah. for me. Fuck this guy. Why? What'd you do? That was a pretty good day for you. Yeah. You know. No, I had it up. And then Connor started talking too. Ah. Uh, not one of those. All right. We got a poll for today about weed. Let's get out of here and let's read it. <laughs> Happy 420. Are you participating? Yep, 35%. Nope, 65%. Well, that's oh. because everybody's responsible. They're probably underage. They know that they yeah, should, you should at least be an adult. 81. These polls are definitely bullshit. Uh, yes, they That are. percentage hasn't changed since we put it up. Yeah, Jay! From 8, Jay, you never talk. What is this about? Jay, you, you that's how bad talk. these polls are. I had to fucking chime in. It's 443 votes to 81,000 votes. The percentage has changed 2%. So that's... Wow, that's Jay's yeah. saying a little bullshit around here. <laughs> it's bullshit. Do we have to take our polls elsewhere? Is that a YouTube poll? Mm -hmm. yeah. YouTube poll, yeah. Why don't you put them on Twitter? No, we did that. Well, just don't do the numbers. You see that number right there, dude? 81,000 votes? That's it's garbage. It's a lie. Yeah, but it looks cool and it feels cool. Yeah. Is that 809 comments, too? Well, what we need to do is do one on YouTube, one on Twitter, and see if the Go percentages are near each other. Go back to that. Or, uh, yeah, because then, then because we have to question every poll of everything. Yeah. If, that, if there's 809 comments, you're definitely not going to get that many on a Twitter poll. But are there actually 809 comments, or is there maybe like 80 comments and people just get tired of scrolling and yeah, I guess probably 800. I'm counting now. Thank, All right, you, thank you. Let us know how it's going. So. <laughs> we'll wait. Out. Can you count out loud, Z? Yeah, 72. Don't do that to Z. <laughs> <laughs> it's so rude. So rude. Uh, I, I keep scrolling. I think it scrolls of 40. It seems reasonable. Let's go to Brian in Boston. Where, what's going on? Came back. What's going on, dude? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, you sound great, Brian. What do you want to talk about? Oh, awesome. Um, I want to talk about Ariel's last appearance on the show. Oh, he stinks. Um, with the fucking that? luchador mask and the tie over his T-shirt. We don't have time. Yeah. There's better. What? There's, you don't have time. For There's him. better analysts out there. No, for him is what I'm saying. We don't have time for him. You know what I mean, Brian? You're kind of over it. Yeah, so there's got to be better analysts out there. Have you ever talked to or heard of Josh Thompson or Big John McCarthy? Big oh. John McCarthy. Ooh, I know he's a ref, yeah. right, Big John? Mm -hmm. Big John. Uh, he used to be a ref. He's now a commentator for Bellator. So they both have a podcast called Weighing In, and they are much better analysts okay. than Hawani. Hawani's a fucking stooge and a sellout. And um, Okay. Is that Big John right there? It might be. Yeah, good it promo be. by him. Is that or Dana? I can't does remember. Ariel know he's got it beef in these streets potentially? I don't think so. You know he's winning all those awards. Oh yeah. Oh, is he up? Is there a? Is this what he won? UFC won? won? Oh, is there I did a, not see that category. He, he's won some MMA award, like MMA journalist award, for ten straight years. I think. Oh yeah, we know. We've heard it. I, I didn't know if it was the sports Emmys though. You think it wasn't a sports Emmy? I don't. If he's not up for a sports Emmy, I'm sure he would like to be. There's a big fight this weekend, actually. Oh, Who's yeah. fighting? 
Usman and Masvidal. Oh, yeah, because yeah. Masvidal said, give me six weeks, I can beat that man. He told Dana White that after the last fight, whenever he yeah. took it on like a one-week notice when he had to fly over to Yas Island. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah, this will be a little bit of a comeback story there, right? What are you oh, saying, yeah. Usman's minus 400. So yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Masvidal ain't beating him. He's got a full training camp. That's fine. So does Usman. Bro, Masvidal trained Jake Paul. You see what he did? <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. First round. What are we even talking about here, dude? What are we even talking about? <laughs> Minus, what is so? What is um, Masvidal? He's got to be plus what? Yeah, Masvidal. Three twenty. Three hundred. <laughs> yeah, give me Mas Street Jesus at plus three twenty. <laughs> yeah. What is Masvidal to knock him out in the first round? Give me that plus whatever. <laughs> yeah, fifteen hundred. Well, maybe. Uh, maybe people say we're a little bit MMA noobs, but uh, you know, kind of just being a big Masvidal fan strictly because he's one of the only people we know by name. Yeah, but who cares? He's trying to make some money. He's got the BMF belt. He's the best motherfucker on earth. Come dude. on. Yeah. Connor wants two belts, by the way. Masvidal by first round knockout is plus 1100. Oh, here we go. That's tasty. What about yes. the first 10 seconds? You know, <laughs> do they have that? No. Connor McGregor said he would like the Connor McGregor belt and put it up for grabs because he's Connor McGregor and it's the biggest fight every single time he fights. It's awesome. I mean, Double belt. Con he has a point, I guess. He absolutely has a point, dude. He's does he want? Uh, I thought he was petitioning that he wants the UFC belts to look a lot more like the Triller belts because those things they used a lot of their budget on them. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> Walking into his next one. This is my. This is me belt. <laughs> Named after me. This one's for the UFC there or whatever. That would be fucking awesome if he just walked around with his own belt on his shoulder every day. Mm -hmm. that he, would should. Be sweet. he should. He yeah. should. Conor McGregor should do that. Something we should think about actually. I might give myself a uh, SmackDown Commentator Championship belt. Oh, Ooh. that's a great idea. Yes. It's a title, by the way. Belts hold up pants. I have a little respect for the business, but whatever. <laughs> what if I just showed up with a championship? Every single week. That would be awesome. <laughs> Michael Cole, please announce me as the champion of commentary. <laughs> I mean, that's the great thing about that gig. You could do that. Like, you honestly, that yeah. could be a storyline. Like I, don't, I don't know if I could do that or not. That's going to have to get okayed by a lot of people. But <laughs> yeah. Imagine yeah. me forcing Michael Cole to announce <laughs> me as, and joining me, uh, the champion of commentators. <laughs> and I just hold the thing up like this to start the entire show. I need it. Oh, that'd be awesome. Welcome to SmackDown. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good idea. We yeah. should. Yeah, we should it's a great someone idea. write that down. I don't know. Somebody dump that so nobody steals it. But yeah. we need to put together a pitch deck for that thing. Mm -hmm. The number of things I could do. Somebody comes over, they do a little thing on the uh, on the commentating table, grab the belt, still champion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still champion. Although maybe somebody comes over and does guest commentary. Ooh. I judge them on how they do. Mm. Still, still champion. champion. Still That's champion. champion. I still got it. You were good. Hey, you were good. Not champion, but you were good. Oh, let me just try to figure out the names of the moves, too. <laughs> hey, hey, before we do Pat, this. On, your, uh, on the desk there where you sit, do you guys still have the old school square monitors that they tend to always rip out and throw away, throw somewhere? They're iPads now. Oh, so that, oh. that can't be part of the show then? No, yeah, they are. They, those things get thrown. And after seeing what's under and how it – I don't know how the, the backs aren't – I mean, I had a drink – <laughs> and a very sturdy thing. Really? And I was like, uh, is this okay here? And they were like, maybe. I'm like, what do you mean maybe? They're like, well, they might. Who knows? And, I'm, and I, th I was thinking to myself, like, if they come over here, that's going to hurt like hell. So I tried to chug it as fast as possible so I get out of the way. But as soon as I get done with it, they're with another one. Like, hey, what else do you need? I'm like, <laughs> uh, And then I had to go run and take a bathroom break. I mean, it was, there was a lot going on there. But I think it hurts like hell still without the big monitors, even though those would hurt a lot more. I mean, the good thing, though, you do have commercial breaks. Like, John Anik, think of him. He'll do, like, six hours straight of UFC fights, and they don't have commercials for a pay-per-view event. That's like Michael Cole. He calls WrestleMania back in the day before went to a two-night affair. It was like seven and a half, eight hours. And he just had to call that thing straight through. I was like, you had to pee your pants. Had to. You just pissed your pants? He goes, no, no, you just you got to properly plan for it with your uh, consumption of liquids or whatever. I'm oh. like, so you're just dehydrated? Are you, are you not dead out there? He's like, it's my job, Pat. To <laughs> I'm like, all right, all right, all right. You're the perfect, hey, you're the goat here. You're the goat here. But I had to go run and do one piss. And there was some alarm bells that went off whenever I got up and sprinted. There was a lot of, there's people that followed me. Yeah. They're like, let's make sure he's back in the right time. It was quite a haul. Damn. 
And I got back and I was out of breath for 45 seconds as the show came back and it was, but I don't think anybody knew. I just didn't talk. I was <laughs> knocking on the stall door. I had to sprint through seconds. the arena. Like I had to sprint through the arena to a place to go to the bathroom. It was wild. Probably gonna have to do it again on Friday. Can't wait for it. This has been the show. Happy 420. AJ, go smoke some dope, will you, pal? <laughs> okay, pal. Thank you. <laughs> like uh, the other day at the show when you were down in Florida, so, oh, what's what's the lighter for? Smoking dope. <laughs> 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 just so quick. You can with it. Well, dope is just such a it's such it a is. hilarious word. Oh, yeah, I agree. Do you know what I mean? And the fact that they used to a lot of people used to call marijuana dope. That was like a normal. Now dope is used as like the actual drugs and mm -hmm. everything like that. But man, it is hilarious just to say. I think so it Nick's, I think it Nick's dad or like a super yinzer. In smoking dope out here. <laughs> on the dope again. Put the dope down. <laughs> What's that? Huh? Ain't no skunks out. <laughs> Is that dope you're smoking out here? Don't smoke dope at my house. Sorry, I'll go out on the street. The cops are going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Happy 420, AJ. Uh, Happy 420. You have a kid named Axel, right? With long hair? Yeah. I assume he's going to participate someday. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let me know whenever you need old Uncle Pat to introduce him. <laughs> Maybe he, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know when he's old enough for you to, to really tell him how the world works. That'll be, what, 15 years from now? He's three years old? Yeah, probably 20, 22 years from now for him. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while, I think. What do you do, lock him down? No, I'm saying for I, how he is. He's just a unique little dude that is in his own little Neanderthal world. He's going to smoke dope. Yeah, he's yeah. going to love dope. Soon. He's going to love dope. Might have to get him at 15. You get him on, you know, all the greatest musicians of all, it, the interesting thing is, you know, all these olds that hate the dope and hate weed and hate marijuana, I want to see the science. They'll go home, they'll turn on some music and just absolutely fucking blast people that have created the music strictly from being high off marijuana, yep. singing about marijuana. <laughs> and then they put their little suit and tie on, go in front of a microphone and make an ass of themselves. Bingo. Yeah. Welcome to America. <laughs> and to this show. I just don't put the suit and tie on, but we do stand in front of microphones and make asses of ourselves. <laughs> we'll do that again tomorrow, 421. Big show tomorrow. Huge. Hey, Huge. We got Big Trick Energy joining us. Oh, oh that's nice. right. <laughs> so are they all coming on like together in one shot from It's going to be fucking terrible yeah. if they are all in one Zoom. <laughs> is that what this is, I assume? I've heard, no yes. Idea. I've heard it's going to be all one FaceTime, yes. On FaceTime, so they live together? I think so, yeah. How many of them are there? I think four. They're going to be in like a, is, are we going to do like a Brady Bunch? Like, how is this? <laughs> I assume that like one's going to be there and then they'll do a magic trick and the other one appears oh. and it's like one after the other. I got faith. They have massive YouTube pages, all of them. So I, yeah. I got faith that they understand the content. Yeah. yeah, they'll get it. Yeah. Or? Yeah. They will. Don't, listen, we need they to go would... in there with a positive open mind. <laughs> they'll get it. Think they're gonna take any shots at Carbonara? I hope not. He already took enough today. <laughs> AJ, what was that all about? I, I'm not criticizing the the individual. Yeah, you are. The show in general, I am. People oh. say our show stinks too. So Carbonara, you probably heard it before. I've heard it before. We've heard it before. AJ's heard it before. This guy's a stooge. We're a stooge. You're a stooge. It all stinks. But I like that show. AJ said he no, was gonna vomit. Stop it. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. stop yeah, it. This is why you have no credibility, Pat. No, you. I, whoa, whoa, whoa. I watch that show. I like that show. What are you talking means. about? People, you do have credibility. I, I take that back. I'm saying. Jeez. The way that you, if you use your wrestling terms, that you put things over, you would think that you love every single thing that is out there. That's not true. That's not true. You did hate okay. that one episode of uh, Young Rock. Two episodes now. Yeah. Especially back if everybody two. else doesn't like something. You're always like, they, it don't deserve that. I love that show. It doesn't deserve it. It's a great show. I think it's great. I love that. And then you, you find an actor that's on the show. Like, oh, I saw this guy in a subway in New York City one time. He's great. Good guy. <laughs> See, I don't hang out in subways in New York City. That's where you hang out. That's why we need you to shake those Emmy people's hands. Please. Whenever you get I saw, there. I mean, there was the only reason that came to my brain is because I saw video evidence of that during one of the commercials you ran when you were on a subway in New York. Yeah, by the way, that was, those are good times. We went to a Yankee game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, playoff game. Yeah. Playoff game. Saw a Grand Slam. Yep. Zito ate how many hot dogs? I think I took down nine in, in seven, seven innings. innings. Yeah. In seven innings. I started double dogging him. Then we had two two dogs, one button. Think about it. Oh, yeah. Then we <laughs> you chugged that beer. Very oh, cool. That was, good time. Yep. that was a good time. We had to wait for the red light to pop on on the uh, on the camera for 
Personally, I think it right-handed batter's box. We're yep. sitting right over the shoulder. At one point, we were sitting behind a mob boss, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, or in front. Yeah, we're right behind a mob yes. boss. People were coming to, t to <laughs> shake, shake his hands. Hand. Thank oh, you. And then oh, leaving. Yeah. And he, that had his, was... he had his kid with him. Mm -hmm. We moved so fast. Yeah, we had an entire row. We bounced down a little bit away from <laughs> yeah. him. Yeah. And you saw Rudy Giuliani in the bathroom. So I'm yeah. next to Rudy. Should have asked him about the sports Emmys thing. That He probably yeah, does he have probably a knows. hand in that. Mm -hmm. But then we went down to the Triple G fight. Yep. That was a hell of a day. It was. Jeez. It was a good day. That good. was all one day? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. And we were on time. Nah, we we're late to mm -hmm. both. But we didn't think we were going to make it to... We thought there was a chance we are going to miss both well, because we, the way we operate. Yeah, we asked like 10 people on the train, like, hey, are we going to the Bronx? And the guy was like, I don't know. It was like, okay, well, fuck. I hope, I hope so. Hey, pal, why don't you lay off the fucking dope so we can ask you a question? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Happy 420. Hammer Don's in, what, 20 minutes? Yes, yes, sir. At youtube.com forward slash hammer. Drafts down. prop special today. Oh, yeah. old, friend, old friend, Michael Lombardi joins the show. Oh, Tyson. Oh, he had a take today that there's no I way Justin Fields goes at three. So he's he must be guaranteeing Mac Jones, which you can get plus money on now at FanDuel Sportsbook somehow, some way. This morning, Justin Fields was also plus money. They got no fucking clue what's going on at Nobody three. does, but Hammer Down will help us understand it and make some good money off it. We appreciate you guys. AJ, we'll see you tomorrow, pal. Sounds good. See you tomorrow, guys. That's the show. That's the show. See ya.